the Pat McAfee Show. There will be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we can talk about. Yes, sir. Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured, fake-ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. Nope, nope. Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat the McAfee Show doing? starts in three, three two, two, one. one. Hello, beautiful people. It is Aaron Rodgers Tuesday, January 4th, 2022. And this sports show shall begin right now. Can't thank you enough for joining us on this beautiful Tuesday. Aaron Rodgers will be joining us in a couple hours after, you know, just stirring the internet up again okay. last night. Had an incredible performance on the Manning cast, as did Snoop Dogg and Bill Cower and Raj. Yeah. Goodell. Goodell. Oh, yeah, yeah, Goodell. Raj. Yeah. From his recliner. I will say, I didn't watch all of the Manning cast. I was very focused on the game and the crowd and the loud for Ben Roethlisberger. I wanted to see the run out. I wanted to hear how Pittsburgh was reacting. If you looked around the crowd, you could almost see different Yenzers that had conversations either the week beforehand or earlier uh, in the day when they were deciding to go to the game saying, oh, we got to go fucking, hey, for Ben, for Ben. We got to fucking go out here for Ben. Ben has done so much for the city for so long, although we don't always go to games. It's going to be cold as shit. We got to go down there for Ben. This team might not be as great as one team or two teams or numerous teams that Ben Roethlisberger has played on. This might not be the greatest Steelers team of all time. Who knows what's going to happen with this Steelers squad. A lot has to happen in week 18 for them to get into the playoffs. But what does the future look like? We don't know. But Ben has done something for 18 years for us. Let's fucking go down to Heinz Field, whose naming rights are up, by the way. Oh. 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 Somebody could be awesome with those. But instead, it'll probably be crypto, sports book, something like that. Yeah. And uh, the Steelers are about to get broken the fuck off. But anyways, you saw dads with the younger generation. We got to go say thanks to fucking Ben Roethlisberger. <laughs> and after that win in which he attempted to throw the ball 46 times and had 123 yards <laughs> in total and absolutely dominated the Cleveland Browns, who are quite a disappointment this year. Ooh. I mean, quite a disappointment. Chubb's on the team. He's really good. Everybody can see it, but Stefanski, it seems like. Yep. Is it a personal vendetta thing? Do they not want him to be successful? Because even on run plays, when Chubb wasn't in for a long time, the ball was being given to Darnish Johnson. It's like, are they looking for next year to scout? Because you have Chubb for next year. Why would you not just utilize your horse? Instead, you have a guy throw a ball who everybody's saying is handcuffed on his left shoulder. Everybody's saying, oh, he can't really throw. You know, it's like, well, then why is Stefanski throwing the ball 100 times a game? Yeah. What, what, if he can't do it, why are they choosing to do that when Chubb's there? Then the internet was telling me that obviously I have no uh, brains or compassion. They're saving him hits. They're saving oh, Chubb hits. Of course. They're resting uh. him. This is a fucking college bowl game now. The NFL, they're resting Nick Chubb because they're already ruled out of the playoffs. So why would you risk Nick Chubb? It's like, I get that that is potentially a thought. And I hope nobody gets hurt. And I hope everybody gets a billion dollars. That's what I hope happens for everybody because I feel like everybody thinks their entire lives will come uh, much better full circle when they get it. Maybe. I'm not 100% sure. But I'm hoping you get whatever the fuck you want. Nick Chubb's a professional fucking running back. A pro. This is his job. And at the end of his career, whenever they're judging him against other greats, I want everybody to be very loud whenever they say, oh, well, in the last two games of a team that stinks, that didn't make the playoffs, that was supposed to win the Super Bowl, they did rest him when he it seemed like he could have got maybe over 100 yards last night if they yeah. would have kept feeding him. I just would like that conversation to be had about Chubb when his career and his legacy are being conversated by all the people that attacked me for not caring about Nick Chubb's health, playing him in a game that doesn't matter. Well, then why is Jarvis Landry? You don't care about Jarvis Landry? You, you don't like Jarvis Landry? You think he's a bad guy? I thought he loved the Browns. Feels like he was one of the main people that brought the entire Browns. And... and how about Batonio? Uh -huh. How about, yeah, how about Joel? Joel? You don't like Batonio? How about Austin Hooper? You paid him, you fuck. Why, why are we wasting him? What are you even talking? Give Chubb the goddamn ball. And Peyton uh, was asking the same questions we all were. Mm -hmm. Is Chubb hurt? Which literal thought, because I don't think they covered it on the main cast either. They were just kind of going about their thing. Is, is Chubb hurt? Why are they not giving him the ball? Then he would come in, make a play, still gain yards yep. somehow. Uh -huh. 
still throw people through the ground, and then you wouldn't see them for another 15, 20 minutes. It's like, what the fuck are they doing over there? None of us know. I'm sure there's a plan. There's probably stats behind it that make a lot of sense. Whatever the case, Ben Roethlisberger gets a win. Najee Harris runs for 180-something. TJ Watt has four fucking sacks. Pittsburgh was electrifying, and they didn't leave after the game. That place stayed packed to the gills because Ben Roethlisberger took the tractor another round. Another round. round. Then he sat down. He sat down. Yeah, he did. Mm -hmm. In the same spot in which he cried alongside Pouncey one year ago and said he was uh, let down because of that, Ben sat down and got that one last, I think, feeling of being on Heinz Field in which he stated numerous times in front of the best fans at the best place to play sports. He wanted to get that one last time. Wrestlers talk about this whenever they come back. And uh, maybe they didn't appreciate it the first time, the first go around when they come back and there's a loud pop or a loud yell or the name's getting chanted. They say they close their eyes basically and like, all right, let's, let's try to bottle this feeling. I think Ben was doing a lot of that last night. Threw a tud, won a game. Pittsburgh uh, celebrated and was excited. Now, obviously, we're just a couple days removed from Yenzers being very pissed off that the Steelers are probably not going to make the playoffs mm -hmm. and what the fuck happened. But it felt like a very good moment last night. I'm not saying it was anywhere near a Super Super Bowl feeling or a playoff win, but last night was a moment I think as a, a person has seen the Steelers play my entire life, literally. Last night was a moment I think that they'll talk about forever down there. At Tone Diggs, your thoughts? They will, and no, it's not the same as winning a Super Bowl feeling or a AFC Championship feeling, but it was it was damn near close. Uh, when I woke up this morning, my wife asked me how the game go, and I I said it went fucking perfect. Like it could not have gone any better from the entrance the crowd the way tj played like the way that Naj played it was fucking perfect from beginning to end I'm getting emotional yeah you really are yeah. it was because it's what it was like back there it, watching it it was all there was so much of this yeah a lot of there's so, so much of this and i you know listening to greasy and riddick and levy try to explain it is awesome because it's real but, like, Pittsburgh is a football con. Mm -hmm. So I'm not saying if it was any other quarterback that did what Ben Roethlisberger has done through the last 18 years, it would be the exact same. But, really, Ben Roethlisberger, last night they were even selling how, you know, his dad was a factory worker. His mom, he, like, embraced Pittsburgh. Like, I want people to know that I wasn't some Cali kid that came yeah. in or mm -hmm. anything like that. Like, I was a blue-collar guy. And I think that is why. And he's been through some shit. Uh -huh. Hey, uh -huh. Ben has been accused of some some tough stuff. He's battled through it all. I don't know what the outcome was. There's a lot of people bring that up in the comments and the mentions. I think if you do, I think that was something that did happen in his life. Obviously, he has to address it. But just the amount of injuries and everything he wants, the amount of greatness, good on him. I'm happy it went that yeah, way. Yeah, he encapsulated the city perfectly throughout like his entire career on the field. And then it's awesome because like some great quarterbacks, you don't get to say goodbye. So it was awesome that the city got to say goodbye, give him his flowers. He got the moment. Like it was, it was perfect. Now, Russell mm. Wilson. Yeah. Okay, after their game, they just blew out the Lions. Mm -hmm. Just killed them. Just dog, dog walked. walked them. Wasn't even close. Hey, hi. Hit. Yeah. Hit. Shut up. Hit. <laughs> Sit. <laughs> and then just. Short leash, too. Just oh, walk yeah. wherever yeah. they wanted to go. All right. Give they the ball back. One. They did this one here. Hey! Hey! Yeah. Sit! Like this. This is what they did. All right. MCDC's yeah. diner. Uh -huh. The rest of the Lions. Hey! Yep. Sit! Tim Boyle. Hey! Yep. Tim Boyle definitely down. Playing that's, fetch. That's exactly that. But I'm saying that's what happened. And Russell went off. And there was a moment where... You know, they started like clapping for him and Russell did a thing. And I don't know if that happens after every big win or anything like that. But that felt as if the Seattle, some of those Seahawks fans, and he maybe thought that was a goodbye. I mean, similar to what happened in Pittsburgh with Ben, but vastly different. You know, vastly, vastly different. Oh, yeah. And I think it's strictly yeah. because there was almost an announcement. Hey, this is probably going to be it. But we have to take into account that a man that was at the Bucks nets game last night, <laughs> did say yesterday on a cameo that you can't rule Ben out <laughs> That's right. Oh. how competitive he is. That's yeah. right. Roethlisberger Ro might be back. <laughs> he might be. Roethlisberger <laughs> is <laughs> not done yet. We <laughs> don't know. We don't know. But Still it sure ball. did feel like last night was him realizing that, although I got one more game against the yeah. Ravens, very, very game Ravens. By yeah, me. huge game. Very, very big game. Because the Colts, okay, have lost away, everybody heard this last night, as an away team against the Jacksonville Jaguars. So five times down in Duval. 
dude. And then one time in London, mm -hmm. the last six times they've lost. The Colts mm. have lost to the Jags. Remember last year, it was Phillip Rivers down there, first week. Joe uh, Dirt picked them off yep. fucking right. fourth uh -huh. quarter. Yeah. Gardner. He said, hey, see you later. Gardner Minshew gets a, a win over the Colts after we had spent, I don't know, a month and a half saying that these Jags are trying to lose. Yeah. Yeah. They're course. cutting everybody. If you're good at football, they're fucking cutting you. Get the hell out of town. Then they play the Colts team that I'm most closely, and they beat them week oh, yeah. one. Ooh. That was a tough day afterwards having to get on this microphone. They would lose every other game, by the way. Just, right. uh -huh. just so we, yeah. we do keep that. They would go on, and then the Colts would go to the playoffs. But nonetheless, not a lot of success down there for whatever reason. If they're to lose and then something else happens, the Steelers can still get in. And with Najee Harris running for 180, you know, you never know what could happen when you get in there. Uh -huh. Chase Claypool is going to have to make some more plays for him, uh, I think, in the future. That's going to have to be something. But that Steelers game last night was awesome. Matt Ty Schmidt, do you fear – I mean, the interview afterwards. He didn't take the helmet off, by the way. Yeah, yeah. boy's football. Football guy. Well, because I think he wanted to – Stay know, in it. He's, you know. I wish he wouldn't have got swarmed so fucking quickly. The media was a little bit obnoxious. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They got to get their shots. We yeah. appreciate them getting – actually, I don't think I used – I don't think we used anybody's shots that were actually in. What were the shots they were getting other than in other people's shots? Newspaper stuff? It's, and the, the guy who tried right. getting the picture as he was, was walking uh, into the locker room, basically, or down the hall with his family at the end, like, there was this perfect, like, video of it, and then the fucking photographer runs right in. I mean, it was a good picture, but... Hopefully you'll be able to edit it out or mm -hmm. whatever as you go, but you're right. Because as he was trying to walk, like, I think his, his teammates were waiting out for him, too. Yeah. I think a lot of his teammates were out there waiting on him and everything, and as he tried to walk closer to his teammates, probably talked to him, that swarm kind of got in the way, and the teammates were like, all right, fuck, we'll get out of the way. <laughs> we'll go down into this whole thing. That was... But we appreciate those yeah. who are covering yep. football. Mm -hmm. But there, there was one time where he was facing, I think, the open end and his family were kind of in the tunnel and because he wanted to go down behind the back, uh, down the steps in the back that they have into their locker room because it is a bit of a walk at Heinz Field to get to the locker room if you were to go through the tunnel. There was a moment there where he was standing before his family came where there's a big Heinz Field sign behind. Like in my head, I was imagining, like, I hope they get at least one photo where it's just like him in the stadium as opposed to all these media people everywhere. And that was, I thought, the moment. And then, boom, immediately upon yep. me thinking that, they just kind of fill closed in, it fill up. In, yeah. Fill in, yeah. It was just like a whole thing. But what a night. What a moment. And let's get back to uh, Ty. You know, with all the uncertainty of the future mm -hmm. of, you know, what's going on down there in Green Bay. Now, mm -hmm. nothing has led us to believe that Aaron will not be a Green Bay Packer next year. I think every conversation we've had with him since the rumors of him maybe not being a Green Bay Packer have led us to have a lot more belief that he's probably going to be a Green Bay Packer. Now, there was a couple of things that kind of threw us off the scent a little bit. You know, I love, love and ball. Love mm -hmm. and ball, love yeah. Love and ball. Whoa, 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 what's that all about? But I think we all can you know, kind of view from the outside. It looks like it's going pretty good there. Now, yeah. we don't know all the conversations that are happening. We have no idea what future happiness looks like, which he said is all he is going to be making that decision off of. But that is something you could potentially worry about, not getting that moment, right? Because that looked very cool. Yeah, that, for la sure. Last night looked very, very, very... Like Peyton got cut from the Colts. Right, yeah. He didn't get... It wasn't like we knew it was going to be his last game. When he, was, he was cut, see you later. Andrew Luck got booed mm -hmm. off the field, His last, literally his last walk off the field yeah. here in Indianapolis. Yep. Now, I'm obviously just talking about this city, but there's numerous stories around where you don't really get that opportunity, especially with one of those guys up mm -hmm. there. there 60,000 yards passing in two Super Bowls. Ben Roethlisberger, Peyton Manning, Tom Brady. I mean, Aaron Rodgers also mm -hmm. obviously in that class as soon as he wins the second Super Bowl. But it's one of those things where you hope you can have that moment and say thanks, but it rarely happens, it feels like. Well, and that's what, you know, just trying to enjoy this season for what it is because they do have uh, a shot to win the Super Bowl this year. But, I mean, you hope that eventually I'll get to see something like that with him, but it does seem like it's kind of trending more towards, you know, a Brady situation where if he decides not to come back, I, I don't think there's any way he's retiring. I think he's going to go play football somewhere yeah. else, but that's also why I've like, it's been kind of easier to in like enjoy these last two years, especially like you look at Roethlisberger, he still has like the shades of it, but you could tell like, mm -hmm. it's just, he's not the same guy, yep. you know, like every once in a while he'll play incredible. But, like, you take it for granted because, like, in the blink of an eye, it's like, okay, he just doesn't have it anymore. You know, he can't he can't do it again. And Rodgers has continued to just play so Another well. MVP. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Congrats, by the way. Yeah, but it's also – and that's also why it's kind of like, okay, well, there's a good chance that I'm – like Packers fans are never going to get that moment with him in Green Bay because he could he might play for another six years and hopefully it is in Green Bay but there's obviously I mean we've heard all the stuff like there's a there's a good chance that that doesn't happen and uh, you know Ben 
I'm wondering if Ben knows, you know, if that's if, like he could have came out and said, yeah, this is going to be my last. He, he thinks it's going to be his last time. And then, you know, there's little whispers that maybe he'll go play somewhere else. Yeah. I, mean, I don't know if well, that is even a conversation. But Ben walking around, I, I think it was very clearly him trying to remember, like, let me get one last. Okay, let me sit here and get one last. Let me see, you know, like mm -hmm. one last feeling every single time so you can hope that you can remember it and put yourself in that position again as you grow older. Yeah, like that. Like he probably would have wanted to look at the field, I assume. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> field he ben, look over here, look over here. He probably would have sit down and look at the field. I mean, thank you for the great photos and it's very cool, mm -hmm. but I assume there was a moment where he wanted to sit there and just like look at the field. But you're Ben Roethlisberger, pal. It's your last game there. It's not going to happen that way. You think there's a chance if Aaron was on the fence of whether he wanted to stay or try and go to a different franchise that he watched that last night and saw how cool it was and thought like, hey, I'm going to do everything I can now to stay a Packer because I want that moment? Yeah, that moment, I think Ben Roethlisberger or just uh you couldn't help but it was i don't know how many people stayed up for it i don't know how many people were up for it live and i don't know how it run like i don't know how it will be viewed later like as a mm -hmm. on-demand thing because of how clunky it was you could hear the pr person saying hey we're going to lisa over here then your mm -hmm. family's coming mm -hmm. down here you're doing it was nowhere near like perfect like there, there was yeah. nothing about it that was perfect but in the moment it just felt so cool i think coming off of the game everything that just happened it's uh I assume there's a lot of guys that are like that was just, that was a sweet moment. I mean, he did a half lap. He I, he committed to a full one. <laughs> yeah, that yeah. Was. He said, all right, I got to get out of here. <laughs> too much, <laughs> too much, too yeah. much. I ain't going all the way around. Uh, but Pittsburgh showed up last night, you know. And at Boston Connor, you know, Tommy had that Hulu commercial. Exactly. Yeah, right. I'm not going anywhere. Yeah. And then he did go somewhere. That's like one of those moments you kind of wish you could have said thanks, but now you got Mac Jones, so who cares, right? Yeah, now? exactly. Now who cares? But I mean, I said this yesterday. That's why, you know, Brady leaving was, I had such a massive problem with because you didn't get to enjoy it. Like Ty is now with Rodgers just in case because he is prepared if he does leave. At least I knew, you know, this year he's won an MVP. I, I took in every game and knew like, oh, okay, he's beating the Bears for the last time. Didn't get that with Brady whatsoever. <laughs> but more so, I didn't. I don't understand why – people don't realize like who Big Ben is. Like during the Brady era, it was Peyton Manning, Joe Flacco, footsteps, One and time. Big Ben. It was just those four quarterbacks in the AFC. There's, I believe there's a stat too, like from 2018 to 2000 or something, those were the only, maybe one other guy, four or five quarterbacks from the AFC to go to the Super Bowl. Like That didn't really make sense to me. But yeah, watching that last night, it, it shows you how – awesome sports are in general like how much you meant to ben how much it means the to Tony. city how yeah, about the city, city? Yeah, 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 yeah yeah it's unbelievable by the way scott van pelt good don last night mm -hmm. yeah, pretty good he don't. did a good job too because when they went they sent to him for uh his show he was like i was gonna ask you guys about the game and shit like that but there's no reason like <laughs> yeah when he was talking to greasy Re yeah and, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah re that's always a pretty good conversation afterwards i appreciate uh scott van pelt's brain I like the way his brain operates. Mm -hmm. yeah. you know, he, whenever, and also whenever he sits down and does a full monologue that he obviously was the author of, and it's an entire well thought of, I enjoy Van P SVP's brain a lot. So we appreciate the shout out for him, but that is why I think it is such a cool moment because it took over other things. It was almost like a breaking news was happening. Yeah. And we tried to hype up yesterday how big of a celebration yeah. of Bennett's going to be. I think it outperformed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think it outperformed. I, I mean, there was there was eyes on him at all times. His first run out had everybody confused thinking that for the warm-ups, had everybody confused that that was his actual introduction, which what, should have been handled a little differently, I think, uh, TV-wise. Well, yeah. I think they shouldn't have showed him running out for a workout or for the warm-ups out of the tunnel. I don't think they should have shown that yeah, at all. Show him yeah. running through the, the two lanes. I'm not talking about when he did for the game. I'm talking When Randy was selling, with said, the team. yelling, turn up your TVs. Yeah, yeah. When, no, when he came out for the warm-ups. Mm -hmm. So when you come out of the warm-ups, you're coming out of the same tunnel because your locker the room's there. Comes out with the tight ends. Yeah, yeah. for like the, the pre-game. For the yeah, pre-game warm off the end too. Go. Yeah, it, threw off, it did throw <laughs> off the yeah. end yeah. But also, there was a lot of Steelers fans already in the building because they wanted to be there for that whole thing. So whenever you put that on air, which I guess you have to because you're just covering it, it's a very cool moment. I think a lot of people thought like that was his intro. I was like, no, no, no. There's there's another one coming. And by the way, he came out. Oh, oh, yeah. oh yeah, he came out. Big time. He came out throwing them. That was cool, man. He was looking down there for a little bit too. I think that was another like, yeah. like let's take this in and mm -hmm. then hey, him lumbering with that bad hip out there. Oh. oh man. No Brett Michaels. No motorcycle. All Ben.
Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Miss, right. We could have never expected that. Yeah. What's up, Nick? I just want to take a moment, and I think we should all give a special shout out and thanks to uh, Kevin Stefanski and Baker for realizing <laughs> yeah, uh, the moment, the moment, <laughs> and you know, really giving Ben the full opportunity to bask in the situation, multiple opportunities, really. And shout out to TJ Watt too he for almost, taking care right. of his last night. He Forced. almost stole the night. He almost got the record yeah. last night. Who, oh, TJ? Yeah. yeah, he's an animal. He's an absolute stud, huh? Yeah. And he's a. He looked like a. Who's that redhead in the alley that beats up the kid in the Christmas story? Oh, uh, Scotty Farkas. Farkas. He Farkas. looks. They had, the helmet was on his. He was yelling. He pointed at Baker. Yeah. Oh, they had a shot of him pointing at Baker, and his face was like scrunched up. And I was like, he looks like that fucking bully kid. Literally at Baker. <laughs> and what's Baker gonna say? Nothing. Baker can't say a fucking word right there. Nope. <laughs> Baker's a chatty guy too. Yeah. So I think TJ's looking for Baker. Go ahead. What are we doing here? <laughs> I have three sacks, five tackles on the day, a couple swats. I'm literally either sacking you or I'm dropping into half coverage and batting your shit in your face. What are you? And would you like to fight? I sit in lakes in the off season. Like that. It. He looked like that. <laughs> yeah. He looked like that when his face was scrunched up and he was pointing at him. It was like this dude is bullying the Cleveland Browns right now. T.J. Watt, absolute superstar. Now, fascinating tweet from uh, J.J. about being the only guy in history to have a certain amount of things. Yeah, <laughs> do, do it twice. Do yeah. It, yeah. And, it, it, and it also just so happens to be his older brother who does talk uh -huh. shit about that. Yeah. Uh -huh. So it, it makes sense why T.J. is so motivated. Doesn't yeah. matter how many, how much money he has. He also has to deal with a brother who, instead of being like happy, which they are. Incredibly proud of each other. But I love that they are a family that reminds, you know, like JJ, remi hey, TJ, remember, like, I got like four of these things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome to mm -hmm. me. Now, J uh, TJ looks like he might, with the way the game's going, too, with a lot of quarterbacks dropping back to pass, with the game kind of changing, not saying that JJ's old, but JJ, when yeah. he came in the league, was a much different league than it is now. TJ is going to go. I, yeah. That guy, uh -huh. he's unbelievable. He is so much fun to watch play football out there. He is a bully. Yeah, that is exactly what he is. Not to kind of change the topic, but like with with Baker, like he's yeah. he's displayed this year how tough he is, obviously, but like does that fucking matter? That's what everyone's talking about. Like he I just I don't understand a what it says about Case Keenum that Baker's fucking entire right side of his body doesn't work, and they're still running him out there to left to side, left side, yeah, left side. Excuse me, yeah, yeah. to play it's every week. Right? No, no, right. no, no, it's not his throwing arm. Not his throwing arm. But like they're continually making these excuses, like, "Wow, geez, you know, this really hampers him. Uh, he's he's got the brace on." Like, and I, I guess he's going to come back next year and get another shot. Yeah. But like, hey. He, it's tough to judge him with all the injuries, but they're also putting him out there and having him throw the ball. Yeah. yeah. So we're all watching him not be good at throwing the ball. And then we're watching other people very good at throwing the ball. And Baker and the Browns almost beat the Packers on Christmas Day. Mm -hmm. That has to be chatted about. But there's a lot of teams that either almost beat somebody very good or did beat somebody very good. On any given Sunday or Christmas, Saturday, or whatever day it could be, you can get a win. But there's a lot of bad tape on Baker right now. Yeah. Right? And, there's, and it's... If it's not Baker's fault because of the injury's fault, well, then it's Stefanski's fault for not having the offense run through the motherfucker in the back Jeez. that is a horse. Dude is a horse. He was doing Give it. him the ball. You got Batania. You got Shredder. You got Hooper, who's a road grader. Yep. Now, he dropped a couple balls last night and jumped offside. Had a rough start. But he was he was pumped for Ben, too. Yeah. yeah. Right. Right. Austin Hooper was pumped for Ben, too. But these are all guys that just run people over. And then you got the horse in the back. So if Stefanski's trying to see and find out if Baker's still the guy, if that's what they're trying to do. Or is Stefanski literally just letting people... Yeah, kind of letting yeah. the floodgates open. Hey, listen, you let me know what you think whenever we make our decision later. Is that what Stefanski's doing? I think you have to ask that question because Baker said the noise was coming from within, not okay. just outside. Is that That's Odell Beckham Jr., right? Is who he's referring to? Yeah. yeah. Or is there potential other people saying, like, hey, what the fuck is going on? You, you are not the best interest of our team. I saw some stuff floating around the internet last night that the people are now thinking that Stefanski's making Baker throw and making Baker yes. do all of this to expose him. That's what we're – yeah, that's exactly what right. we're alluding mm -hmm. to right now. Yeah, Stefanski being like, look, this is what – when we move on from this guy, we would like to let the football gods know – We'd like to let all the fans know that we understand that he's the first quarterback in a long, 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 long list of quarterbacks that have failed here. And we understand he's the first quarterback that has led us to a playoff win, not just a playoff win, playoff win against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Yeah. We understand that. Yeah. But we are moving on because this is the case. That is a hilarious narrative that was on the internet. 
that almost felt like it could be true last night whenever you're seeing Nick Chubb on the sideline with a fucking jacket on when he's averaging 14 yards a carry or whatever. It's like, are we trying to win the game or are we trying to prove a point here? That's that's almost what we're, you know, you have to ask. And I don't know how the people on the team don't ask that question. I mean, I, I don't know how anybody doesn't ask that question. You got to have your blinders on. Mm -hmm. You just got to trust your people that are making decisions to make the best decisions. <laughs> mm -hmm. You got to do that whole thing. But I, I think if you have a brain, it's hard not to think like, the fuck are you guys doing back here? Well, on the other side of it, a game that Baker didn't play in when we had a Nick Chubb super boost, the same fucking thing was happening against the Raiders. Remember? But then. But then he came in, in the second half and done it. Yeah. Gone. It's in I thought maybe they were gonna bring him in the second half. Oh, uh, maybe they're waiting to wear him. Now yeah. this is a non playoff making motherfucking team that we're talking about yeah. right now. Mm -hmm. That's why I don't understand the sentiment of saving Chubb that people are saying, Well, but he was saving him, he doesn't want to get too many like Baker's obviously hurt and he was getting crushed last night. Yeah, don't, wouldn't you him. want to pull yeah. Baker Kill. and keep yeah. him yeah. safe in a T game that doesn't matter? TJ Watt was picking him up and just saying, Hey, how you doing? Let me see that shoulder. I'm bang. <laughs> yeah. Hang on. Bang. <laughs> Bang! Bang! Nine that's times four. he got sacked. Like yeah. That. Jesus. I mean, that's absurd. And wasn't the the reports came out when he was talking about in the building? Like, I think we looked into that a couple months ago on the show, and someone said, like, yeah, there's actually rumors, too, that, like, him and Stefanski aren't getting along. They don't, they're not speaking to each other. Like, he doesn't feel like he has the confidence of his coach and, what and all Stefanski that kind of stuff. What if Stefanski is so bitter and petty? He's like, oh, is that right? You, you're the guy, huh? All right, here we go. <clears throat> Going against a guy trying to get defense player of the year and break a sack record. <laughs> we'll throw this thing 75 times, Baker. Mm -hmm. Let's put this on your shoulders, pal. You're smarter than me. What if that is? What Stefanski's doing? They got a lot of problems if that's the case. And that's, by the way, I don't want to say it. Dig says it all the time. If that is what's going on, you got to think same, same old brownies. And they had a rookie right tackle and they weren't helping him out whatsoever with the entire night. Yeah, with TJ Watt. And if I think Baker, Aaron. I think Aaron came on the Manicast yeah, and said, "You got to chip him at yeah. some point or whatever." Aaron was watching the game, by yeah, the way. Yeah. He recalled something that uh, Ben did where he thought he drew somebody off sides and he didn't get the call. Threw a deep ball, incomplete, second down. The Monday Night uh, Football didn't even address it. No. They, they, they said it was a free play, Naturally. and then it was second down. They didn't even address it. Like, well, Ben thought it was a free play, as we all did. They clearly didn't call it or whatever. But it was one of those things where Aaron was paying attention, which was fascinating to me. How is his – because he knows everything, it seems like, about defenses that he's playing against. So the amount of film you would think you would have to watch. Uh, but he probably just has it all stored in there. He's mm -hmm. now at this point, he's the Neuralink, like yeah. uh, Tom Palacero oh, yeah. when it comes to that shit. I would assume so. Yeah. How's he read 100 books? He was I learned about one he read, or he read last night. It caused <laughs> quite a stir. Speed reader. It caused quite a stir. Mm -hmm. The book he uh, – I didn't know who that person was, but – no idea. I learned a little bit. The internet is not the biggest fan, I guess. No. No, no, no. Good old Atlas Shrugged, huh? Uh-huh. Yeah, so I guess some people read that from school reading. We did not have that at Plum High School. I don't huh? think so. Plum High School. Not that we would have probably read it either way, but. We well, read I've, Goosebumps. I'm, we did read <laughs> Goosebumps. Goosebumps is great. Who's that? R.L. Stein. R.L. Stein. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> yeah. My reading ability is, uh, is not great, strictly because the way I read books through school school was asking my friends to give me a synopsis of the chapter please mm -hmm. so then i would be able to cram that in first question who's answering boom me let's go ahead and let that one out until the next chapter's due so i never actually read any books but i feel like i get the gist of a lot of them that atlas shrugged was not on our what's that called a r cell red reader reading curriculum there Boom, is. bang, pow. All those, <laughs> mm -hmm. all those are right answers. But I guess that has caused quite a stir on the internet. And they're like, of course, Aaron. Of course, Aaron. Of course, Aaron. This was school reading, though? This was high school reading? I never some had classes? to read it, but never. I know it was, uh, yeah, very popular on the reading list. I, uh, probably, I don't know, maybe at like five years before you were in high school, I would say. People, like that kind of that class that's like right above you. Man, never heard of it. Aaron is in that age group. I'll tell you what. I learned something profound in the hatchet. Yeah. Okay. Thank if you, you got one, you're in a good spot. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. Even if you're in a bad spot. Mm -hmm. Rest in peace, Gary Paulson. Rest in peace, Gary. Rest in Gary. And thank you to that hatchet for fucking hatcheting the shit out of something. Yeah. So that Gary Paulson, is that the author? Or the yeah. Person? The author, <laughs> author yeah. Yes. Wow, okay. Who's? <laughs> he also wrote Brian's Winner, which is Was that the just uh, sequel? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Who's Bruce's Winner? <laughs> Brian's winner. Brian. Oh, Brian. Brian's winner. Yeah. I got to get to a break. Dude. <laughs> we got Cam Jordan joining us in nine minutes. This thing died like 10 months ago. I haven't really been able to hear what Zito's saying, but he has 
dabbled into the conversation a few times, so I apologize, Zeke. That is 100% on me. Um, can't wait to chat with Aaron, uh -huh. though. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Congrats to Ben Roethlisberger. What a cool moment for sports in the NFL last night. I assume ratings are going to do pretty well for that. Pittsburgh Steelers seem so. to uh, garner a lot of needles to be moved or whatever. What a cool moment for a couple teams that, I mean, no offense, Pittsburgh. We just put you over pretty big, and I like that they went to another sandwich place for Monday Night Football. Mm -hmm. Next time, I'd like them to stop by Rudy's. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> Everybody knows Permanente Brothers. I, I love Permanente Brothers. Got nothing but respect for the Italian They're doing brothers. Fine. Huh? They're doing just fine. Just fine. They have franchises. They're good. We have nothing but love for them. But there are other fine sandwiches mm -hmm. around Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh is a sandwich town. And uh, they spotlighted the Roethlisberger from Pepsi last night. And, uh, you know, I've never had it personally, but whenever they created that idea, I said, fucking obviously. Yeah. Why didn't somebody do that a long time ago? Brilliant marketing for a quarterback that is beloved alongside sandwiches that are also loved. What a night. For Ben in Pittsburgh, we're back in four minutes with some phone calls on a five-hour energy phone line. one 833 4 Then we'll have Cam Jordan of the New Orleans Saints. Dude's made the Pro Bowl like five or six times straight. Yeah. <laughs> Leads a defense that shut out Tom Brady a couple weeks ago. Yeah. And forced that fumble. Walter Payton, man of the year. Okay. Still in the running right now. The Saints still can go yeah. on a run. Oh, yeah. Got a yeah. great defense. Taysom Hill can battle through uh, mallet finger mm -hmm. and make some plays. Kamara still on the team? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah. We'll talk to Cam Jordan on the other side as well as you. We can't thank you enough for joining us on this beautiful Aaron Rodgers Tuesday, January 4th, CN4. <laughs> oh, here we go. All right. Uh, put that capo on. something? No, I was going to let you lead the way, and then we were going to sing our song that we practiced. What do you guys sing? It's our song, Aaron. Go ahead. Our song? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Well, I was just about to get into it. It's uh, Tuesday. They say is that Aaron Rodgers is rather great. The son of a bitch lied. Oh. <laughs> I, thought, I thought that's where I thought that's where we're still writing it. I thought we're gonna you guys just got no. a chance to kind of dive into a writer's room uh, with me and Aaron. Process. I have a surprise, obviously. That's what this show is all about. Uh, we have boots on the ground in Cleveland, who I assume knew this was going to happen what? all along. Ladies and gentlemen, live from Cleveland, Mr. Jason Glazer, your thoughts on Kyle Pitts to Atlanta fine, sir? Oh, there's a delay. Well, uh, first and foremost, Pat, I'd like to say, hey, listen, thanks for having me. Cleveland is beautiful this time of year. Granted, it does smell like a mixture of poop and diarrhea and sewage. Jesus. Uh, it doesn't smell great down Jesus. here. Jesus. But I'll tell you what, 27 years in this thing, I fucking live for the draft. Love being down here. Love being in the Cleveland. Uh, but yeah, Kyle Pitts, listen, what do you want me to say? I knew this two weeks ago. Really? I mean, do we need to do this whole fucking song and dance? Okay. I'll give you guys one through 32 if you, if you want to know. You know, <laughs> do you want to have fun? That's nice. You want to not know who's going. Uh, but yeah, I had this two weeks ago. You know what I'm wondering is if the guy you had in your studio, Mad Mel Kuyper, I know that sorry son whoa, of a bitch whoa, didn't have this whoa. two weeks ago. Mike's not, did Mike's not plugged in. Whoa. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Uh, I actually just explained no, it. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. No, yes, I did. Yes, no, I did. I had this. No, no, you didn't. I, did. you I didn't. had this. I, I had you it. Didn't. Trust me. Can you I didn't. talk for Christ's sake? Okay, fine. Fine, yeah. Can Go I ahead. talk? Okay, yeah. Jesus. Like I said, Kyle Pitts, unbelievable talent. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. You didn't fucking yes, have I did. You did. Jason. Sack of shit, Jason. I know it. I looked Jason. in the mock draft. Jason, please relax. Oh, my God. Jeez. I had no idea it was going to get like that. Sorry about that, Mad Mel. Obviously, there's a little bit of uh, content there. He's saying you don't know your ass for a fucking hole in the ground, though, Mad Mel. Oh. How do you feel about that from Ooh. Jason Glazer live in Cleveland? Well, classic move. You know, Glazer looks like he's getting ready to go to a goddamn titty bar or something like that. <laughs> I mean, dress up, pal. It's the NFL draft. Look at me. I'm dressed to the nines. You know, you look like an asshole. I mean, eh, just eh, get him out of here, can we? I mean, is he, is he going to stick around? Or can we get him the hell out of here? I think is his uh, microphone still on Jay, can you hear us? Jay, is everything good back there? Listen, fuck you guys. Oh, I'm out of here. Though. I'm going over to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I'm going to hang out with Dee Snyder and Twisted Sister. Are you serious? Okay, Jason, okay. sorry. Thank you so much. And ladies Jeez. and gentlemen, Jason Glazer. Thank you, Jason. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Roger Goodell gave me a big hug beforehand, too. So that's good, sir. Thank you so much. Shane, you drinking? Yeah. Cheers to you, man. That was a good one. That was good. <laughs> that was good. Oh, that was I feel so like good. it went pretty good. Oh, look at the phones. <laughs> All right, Chubb, listen. All right, I love you. We're gonna stack up for next year though, okay? So you get on silent, you put a fucking jacket on, when I ask you to come in, do your thing, but we need to get a better quarterback. So to do that, you gotta play chess here. You know, everybody's talking about playing chess. Chubb, you understand chess, we're playing chess. We gotta do a couple moves. We gotta move, pawn, boom, watch. We can get the queen, go boom, <laughs> pop, boom, boom. We gotta go, boom, expose Baker. We're gonna have him throw the ball <laughs> 45 times. Whenever he does that, knock him down. He's out of the game. Guess what? Checkmate though, we got, Quarterback, they can play quarterback. Boom. What if that's what Stefanski's doing on the side with Chubb? That's why we don't hear anything from Chubb. I put out a tweet last night. Chubb has had to have thought at least one time, what if I ain't telling you Brown right now? And Chubb would never do that. Everybody no. says Chubb is like the greatest human of all time. But I wonder if there was ever a time in Chubb's head where he was like, is it because I'm too nice of a guy that I don't get the goddamn fucking ball? Jonathan Taylor seems to be the nicest guy of all time. They're just feeding him over yeah. there. And Indy, that team is built similarly to how this team is built. How come that whole... I wonder if Chubb ever asked that. Now, Chubb, consummate good guy, it sounds like. Consummate good teammate. He came on the show incredibly cool, genuine, hilarious. I'm not saying he would ever think negatively like that, but at some point the human instinct has to kick in when you go, hey, our team stinks, we're not making the playoffs, and I... I think I should be a larger part of that. I'm not saying Chubb's doing that. I'm just saying it would be feasible to think that he did think that at least one time last night. Yeah, I mean, is there a reason we got Baker throwing the football 50 times a game? <laughs> Guy's throwing four or five picks every but he single can't, week. But he can't throw because his left shoulder. Right. Sure. But I can't get in there? You guys have a guy who can't even throw. You, you actually said, Stefanski, that he has a harness which is handcuffing him uh -huh. yeah. in his throws. But you're still having him throw more than I'm getting the ball. What are we even... At some point, the human instinct would have to kick in there. Yeah. Anyways, uh, let's take a phone call here before Cam Jordan joins us. Can't wait to hear what the people have to say. Let's go to Rob down here in Fort Myers. Rob, what's going on? Pat, the boys. How we moving? Keep it doing. <laughs> Nailed it. Nice. nice. Nailed it, Bob. What do you want to talk about, man? Uh, down here in Florida, wanted to say really appreciate that you guys talked about the Dolphins. We don't get a lot of love on national shows, so really love that. Gumpy, shout out. Hell Wonder yeah. Fins up. Fins up, baby. Fins, Fins up. Fins to the loss. Fins, Fins up. to right. the loss. Fins to the loss. Fins hey, I wanted to, to see if you guys would do a oh, moment wait. of silence with the me. Only, uh, 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 For the death Dolphins. of the Dolphins. Miami Dolphins, Miami Dolphins. Is that their name? Number one, do do do. Is that real? Yeah, it's a banger. It's classic throwback. See, you guys remix Jimmy Buffett's fins to the left, fins to the right. And you're, is that what you guys did? No, a completely different song, but that is the Dolphins theme song <laughs> when we had Dan Marino and we're good at football. Let me hear it one more again. Miami Dolphins, Dolphins, Miami Dolphins. Number one. I heard a remix of it right now. That might be more true. A little that bit might be right. A little that bit might be right. Uh, sorry we cut you off there, Bob. What were you going to say, Kyle? Hey, I was going to wonder, since the Dolphins playoff hopes are dead, if you guys would join me in a moment of memorial for the Miami Dolphins 2021 team. All right, Cam Jordan's on the line, so let's make sure we keep this quick, Bob. Go ahead. Uh okay. He didn't want to say anything. No. He said, I don't deserve shit. Yeah, two bombs. Bob I thought he was going to give like so a... Did I. Yeah. yeah, two... Uh, a nice eulogy. little eulogy. Yeah, yeah, I thought so too, because he said in memorandum. Mm -hmm. What, in memoriam is what we do? Memoriam. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's when like the music plays and the, the ears and the faces pop up. Yeah. Montage. Here's, you know, through Gumpy's phone talking to Cam Jordan's rep, and it does appear. <laughs> it's uh, middle of... No, it's not. Tuesday's on a work week, I don't think. Or maybe it's a work day for the Saints. I'm not 100% sure. I thought he was on the phone. He is not, Zito is saying. Zito is currently in conversation with him. Is he in the bathroom? We will <laughs> we'll find out whenever he gets on here. Well, it's a man of the year. Probably in the bathroom. A uh, couple seconds. No, oh, Zito. Youngstown, Ohio. Paisan, how's it going? 
Pat and the boys, how we doing? Keep it moving. moving. How's the family? Listen, I owe you guys an apology. I called in earlier this season and said that, no, I wasn't going to do a damn thing behind that offensive line. Turned out I was wrong. Yeah. But... Take him off the list. (laughs) Take him off the list. You're lucky you called, Anthony. You're lucky you called. We have a list of people that have said dumb things on call. You were right there in the middle (laughs) of that list. We're going to take you off, Anthony. Hey, you know, Kevin Stefanski owes me an apology, too. I didn't know the dollar store Kevin Love was coaching the Browns last night. Oh, Oh, what a shot, dude. Couple Cleveland legends there, Kevin Love yeah. and Kevin Stefanski. Yeah. Uh, joining us now is a man who's like a five or six time pr- uh, straight Pro Bowler, seven time all together. Walter Payton Man of the Year. This human not only dominates on the football field, but gives back to his community. Just a couple weeks ago, they shut out the reigning, defending, undisputed Super Bowl champions. A defense is led by this man that everybody says could go on a Super Bowl run. Ladies and gentlemen of the New Orleans Saints. Out of cow, Cam Jordan. Yeah. Yeah. What's up, dude? Man, you know, this is another blessing. Well, Being able to wake up, have another game on schedule, see if we can't get us a dub. <laughs> okay, <laughs> on schedule is a big deal, especially in the middle of this COVID world, I'd assume. Has that affected the day-to-day? Just people being scared to death of maybe catching Omicron and having to miss a game? Do you guys even think about that or talk about it or just understand it's uh, reality? Look, Optimus Prime that caught me a couple games back. I mean, <laughs> I, it just is what it is. It's just something that you have to deal with the daily norm. Um, you know, was it two games ago? What did we have, like 22 on the COVID list? And then all of a sudden, you know, the NFL, PA, NFL get together, make the new rule change. Now it's five days out. So instead of sitting out 10 days, you know, you're sitting out five days. And now it's, it's not as – it's not affecting you as much. Okay. So the Saints always seem to be on uh, the interesting side of rule changes and things like that throughout your entire stint. So I appreciate the grit down there of fighting through. You guys are still right in the middle of it. And I think a lot of people would say it's because of how great that defense is. Did you guys know going into the year that it was going to be, you know, a lot of weight on the shoulders of the defensive side of the ball, obviously without Drew? Or is this just kind of status quo for the defensive side of the ball down there? Man, I feel like it's been our standard the last four years. Um, in fact, include this one, it'd be the last, you know, it'd be including this, it'd be five years. Um, we want to be the focal point of our team. At the same time, you know, you knew once Drew uh, wasn't a part of our wasn't a part of our team anymore uh, as, as far as a quarterback. Um, he's probably forever going to be a saint. But as far as a quarterback goes, we're going to be fighting. Um, I think Jameis showed great flashes of being a franchise quarterback, and then we're working towards, uh, you know, each and every one of these wins beyond that. Taysom Hill, what do you? He fights through mallet finger just a couple weeks after Russell Wilson goes into the lab and works like a Wolverine. They said 19 <laughs> hours a day to get back from it. Taysom has kind of just played through that entire thing. Seems like he is the guy that is being chosen here to go forward. How come you think it wasn't like that at the beginning of the season? And what have you seen about him like behind the scenes that makes you think like, okay, Taysom could be a, a QB. Like Sean Payton pays him in that fashion, uh, has it set up in his contract. What have you guys seen down there that is like, okay, not only the wins, but – off the field, this guy could be a dude as well. And, um, you know, he was able to sit back and, and watch Drew work and take over. And last year, we still won, what, like four out of five games he started. So we knew we could win with him. And then this year, he's uh, he's shown progression. I mean, you talk about what he was able to do last game, um, you know, get the, get the first downs you needed with the feet. You know, go progress beyond the first, second read. You know, look off some throws. Uh, he saw some elevated play, and that's where you – you know, you build that confidence saying that, hey, you know, this is a guy that not only we can win with, but I think we can we can do a lot more than just get just get a win. That's awesome. I can't wait to see what you guys do going forward, especially next year. CJ GJ, okay, is a stallion. I think that at the beginning of his run at the NFL, the only thing we really knew is, oh, this guy is incredible at getting people to break. Like this dude, it might be one of the most legendary shit talkers in the history of shit talk. But now he's kind of evolved his in the game, in everything, right? Just in everything. He's evolved his game even more though, right? I think on the field, he's is it just because he's getting wiser or is it because we're noticing it more? I'll say you're just noticing it more. Like Chelsea's always gonna put that work in. And I mean it's it's you know, it's by his work ethic that he's feels so confident in his uh talking all the noise. I mean talking he, he's in fact in my mind he's just playing chess. That's his version of chess. 
Guys are playing checkers, just playing one v one. He's over here attacking mind, body, and soul. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's awesome. Walter Payton, man of the year. Uh, I don't, I don't know how many times you've won it. I should have done more research, but giving back to the community, especially in a position that you're in is such an incredible thing. I hope you win it. I hope you do that. And we just want to say thanks, man. We just want to say thank thanks. You. Thank you, From the NFL community. You love New Orleans, huh? Love it down there. Absolutely. One with the community fully at this point. Man. I mean, 11 years in a, in a situation to do that for you, but 11 years and we started off 11 years ago with the lockout. I mean, the city embraced me before the team could embrace me. So I, I got nothing but love for this place. I saw you at the Pelicans game. You got a massive ovation from the city. And uh, that was when Zion was playing basketball. Yeah, right? oh, yeah. yeah and this isn't, uh, this isn't football related, <laughs> but we need to get your insight because your boot's on the ground. Hey, maybe this offseason... You and Zion work out together, you know, for the good of New Orleans. Let's get the Pelicans back on track. <laughs> Man, hey, if we get both the Saints and, and the Pellies into the playoffs, oh, oh, this city going to have a whole nother second-line parade going on. This is going to be beautiful. Huh? But, I mean, you know, Zion gets healthy. Everybody knows what kind of monstrous force he is, so we're going to leave him at that. Um, and, you know, if he ever wants to come over here and play, play my three technique, Oh, we Ooh. can we can be Hall of Famers. Oh, <laughs> no. he, he, I, I say three technique because I'm just not putting him on the edge. I need I need myself and I need Marcus on the edge. So him, Dave, him, David, me, Marcus, we could do some things. Oh. We could we could wreck a lot of we could wreck a wreck a lot of a lot of teams. Could you imagine? Could you imagine Zion either eating a couple guys, just holding on? Hey, you're not going anywhere, and then boom, hitting him with a spin move on the next play. I mean, are you kidding me here? And then that frees up you guys on the outside. Like, hey, Zion, uh, this isn't about you being built like a three technique. No, no, no. This is about what we could potentially need on our team. It's about bettering the team. That's all you're saying. Man, Man I'm telling you, they look explosive. We talking about you know footwork is there. You seen the bully ball he plays on the court. I'm just saying it translate real well to this, you know, four man, four man third down package. Oh my God! Okay. Did you imagine? <laughs> Last question from me before the boys have theirs. Uh, how Sean Payton feel about Kevin James playing him in the Netflix series? And have you guys got uh, early viewing on the year that was Sean Payton when he was suspended? Oh man, what was that? Like my second year in the league. This is, this is going to be interesting to review. I mean, no, I haven't gotten a uh, – he hasn't even offered a private screening. In fact, I'm on his head today about it, uh, boss. I mean, <laughs> when you think about – when you think about what we, want to, what, what we want to do as a team, we're locked in on this last game, you know, for our playoff hopes. But I'm definitely going to have to have this discussion with Sean about, you know, why didn't we catch a private screening of this? This is disrespectful. It is. Is, is it a Netflix release? If it's Netflix release, I'm definitely is, – is, it can't. Look, yeah, there he yeah. is. There he yeah, is. Good. There he is. That's that's your coach. Oh my god. That's your coach right there. Yeah, go ahead. I'll say text me that one. I'm I'm gonna say that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Go ahead, Ty. Cam, uh, if you guys get into the playoffs, there's a good chance you'll be able to. When we get to the playoffs. There Come you on, go. Okay. Hey, 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 okay. Hey, yeah, hey, hey, a little positivity hey, around here. When, when you on. get into the playoffs, there's a good chance you're going to have to defend the Nickelodeon Bowl title. Have you guys put any <laughs> thought into that? I know you were supposed to get slimed last year, and for whatever reason, it didn't happen. When you guys get into that game and win, what are you thinking? Maybe going to get slimed this year? Great question. Uh, when we when we stack these wins, man, I, if that's what it takes, that's what it takes. I'll I'll, I'll jump in the vat myself. Um, as long as as long as it's a, it's a it's a winning bath, I'll take it. What has the message been? You guys have been in playoff games, I guess, for the last few weeks, huh? It's kind of like that's been the mind. Been in playoff mode uh, this last week and for sure this week coming up, especially with uh, you got the dirty birds over there. They're just trying to ruin seasons now. Like, go oh, ahead, just lay it down for us, you know, like. <laughs> Just uh, don't foil my plans. I'm just trying. I'm just trying to prolong everything that I want. I'm trying to get this Super Bowl here. Whatever it takes, week by week, that's what we got to worry about. So it's not about them. It's about us. Cam, what's playoff mode mean? What does that mean? Does that mean uh, a little bit more film, a little bit more locked in, a little less uh, anything else happening outside? What does it mean exactly? If you had to explain it to somebody that didn't know, I'll say Pat. You know exactly what playoff mode is. Like everything's just a little bit more serious. Those reps you take in and practice now means so much more. Um, and when you think about the locker room talk, you know, it goes from guys playing music to guys being, you know, being just more locked in. Now it's every conversation is football instead of every other conversation. 
<laughs> you know, that helps. It's, it's what do we have to do as a team to get where we want to go? Um, and not that it isn't during season. It's just playoff mode is just that next level of intensity. That's awesome. I think people are going to love hearing that, especially Saints fans. Go ahead, Connor. Yeah, Cam, uh, the Saints have had like 57 different starters, I think, this season, which is an NFL record. And against Miami, Sean Payton said that there were guys getting fitted for pads before the game. Have you had to like introduce yourself to people on the sidelines? And have you? how many different – Game day. On game day, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. On game day, like, hey, by the way, uh, at breakfast, hey, bro, Cam, your name is. And, like, I had literally, uh, Miami game, two defense alignment. They must have flown in, like, Saturday or Sunday. Like, it was, like, to, to, to get us to, to the game, we had to do what we had to do. And they, it's not like they just flew them in for bodies. They played and played well. Hey, I – Hey, I had to introduce I, – I called a guy by his number on a punt before. You know, because special teams is where a lot of these guys are just getting brought in on, like, Saturday or Sunday. So it was always nice to chat with them almost in the morning. Like, hey, this is all you're going to have to do. No worries. There was a guy that, for some reason, didn't even get to our morning meeting. He, like, just kind of showed up. And I was screaming, like, hey, 54 – hey, 50 <laughs> – didn't know the fucking guy's name. This is the NFL, I thought to myself. This is the NFL. I don't even know this guy's name. This is unbelievable. He played great. He was not on our team the next day. Ah. But he played – great at the time it was very very nice of him go ahead tone uh cam i was listening to a broadcast earlier i think it was this month and they were talking about how early in your career you they had you playing inside but you were like hey like i got these fucking hands put me outside let me bully these lighter tackles what do you do exactly to work on those hands and to bully those guys outside i uh, bring them to work every day <laughs> look all my teammates know bro like i come to work with these hands the lord has blessed me with so i have to bless somebody with these hands <laughs> It is, it is what it is. What is it about you? Heavy? Heavy-handed? Always have been? Quick? What is it? Uh, hard, hard working is what I'm going to rely on. Oh, let, let's let's just put that one out there. H hard working. Um, but no, I mean, literally, like just like you said, you know, they they saw me as a four eye, a three technique type guy, and, and I was like, I'm an edge. Like you know, I'm an end. I'd rather be in a nine crashing down on a tight end than sticking up platform blocks all day. I mean, there's some, there's a lot of dirty work in, in, in that three tech life. And it's so much easier on the body on the outside. I'm willing to go ahead and ragdoll a 245 to 60 pound tight end rather than trying to mangle and wrangle with the 350 pound phone booth guard. I mean, come on. <laughs> the highlights no are better. Even when you're not getting a sack, you're at least having a little bit of a clip of you throwing somebody as opposed to don't even think about going down onto a knee inside. You. <laughs> Guys go down to a knee, they just get absolutely ruined. You got 600 pounds of people pushing on you. Uh, good luck this weekend. When you get to the playoffs, can't wait to see you defend your Nickelodeon Bowl Tournament Championship. And uh, thanks for the time. Good luck on the uh, Walter Payton Man of the Year as well. You're awesome. Hey, appreciate it, brother. You guys stay blessed. Hey, you too, man, ladies and gentlemen. What is that on your shirt there? Uh, this is a sweater, man. You know, a little fit. Politics, a little shoe company down, down here in New Orleans, Baton Rouge area. Are you a part of it or you're just a big fan? Nah, I mean, it's just a sweater of the day. I'm more, you know me, I'm I'm more I'm more of a Jordans, you know. It's, it's always about the kicks for me. Ladies and gentlemen, Cameron Jordan. Thank you, man. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. You can't see which kicks they were, but I'll bet you they were nice. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Seven-time Pro Bowler. That guy's got good Jays. Yeah, the only thing know. he cares about is his Jays. That's yeah. right. I'd assume those are very good shoes. Hour one wrapping up here on this Aaron Rodgers Tuesday, January 4th. Happy New Year. Congrats to the Steelers getting a big win last night. We have a lot to talk about around the NFL, and A.J. Hawk will be joining us in about six minutes to do so. Ooh, okay. Hey, there's a lot going on around the league. Oh, uh -huh. yeah. Zimmer's burying quarterbacks. Yeah, hey, yeah. Uh Joe Judge is getting criticized by everybody. There's clown show organization conversations happening all over the place. And there's a lot of teams about to make a hell of a run, including the Green Bay Packers. Hell yeah. Aaron will join us in an hour. We'll see you in six. Cheers. For our guests, for us, for the things we can talk about. Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem. Saw a picture of you getting out of, I think, a 757 that is from Jim Ursay. What was that? And have you ever been in that plane before? I, I thought it was like a, the team plane. <laughs> to spy all of the Indianapolis Colts. <laughs> I, uh, literally, I mean, it's got the logo on it, uh, Pat, and uh, it was awesome. But look, that's just Jim. Pat, I had a wonderful 14 years there. It, I, it's obviously the team that I wanted to play for always. I, I understood the, the, the decision he had to make and 
no hard feelings. And uh, for him to send his plane to fly me and my son down here, uh, it, it was a great, great gesture. A lot of room for me and Marshall. We were throwing the football. <laughs> <laughs> so, pretty, uh, pretty, uh, pretty cool experience. Pretty cool father-son weekend. By the way, as he's moving from event to event right now, <laughs> you are the best, dude. Where are you headed right now? I'm going to the game. I'm going to the game. I got Lynch. I got Fanica. I got these guys in the background. So, boys, uh, how you? Congratulations! Yeah. Yeah. Congratulations, boys! All right, Peyton. Oh, hey, there he is, Marshall. I hope you enjoyed that plane, pal. Hey, Peyton. <laughs> last thing here. Um, you talking to Tom Brady? You becoming friends with him? Uh, it was interesting to watch. Oh, yeah, take the photo. Take the photo. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we will wrap this up. Well, I'll tell you, Pat, um, I don't think anybody can do what, what Tom has done. Look, I know how hard it was for me to get on the same page with my receivers, learn a new system, learn new coaches. But I had a full off season. I was injured. I was rehabbing. The fact that Tom has done this in a COVID pandemic offseason no time to meet with his receivers he met with his coaches illegally by breaking into byron levis's house uh, so besides that uh it's been incredible what he's been able to accomplish and uh he deserves all the credit his leadership is, is what put the bucks in this game today and uh i have great respect for him because i know how hard it is but uh, he deserves all the credit hey how did you know red 18 was coming Pat, I mean, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you telling that story and, and just growing the legend. That was about the 18th time I tried it. I was 17 going into that. And, you know, when it doesn't hit, you just keep walking. And nobody ever really tells you about it. So when it hit, I was as surprised as you were. And uh, the reaction from, from some of the... Some of the good old folks there in the casino that night was uh, pretty special. Well, I appreciate you doing that. You made me and those folks in the casino a bunch of money. Congrats on the Hall of Fame nod. Thank you for spending time. Enjoy yourself at the game, Peyton. Pat, thanks, pal. I appreciate you. The, sh you. the Sheriff Hall of Famer, Peyton. Yeah! Yeah! Hell of a machine. 310J, dude. Oh, mm -hmm. top of the line. That's when they were singing about being sexy. That's right, yes. The 310J. When somebody saw it, they're like, that's sexy. And he was like, the country yeah, music, you're right, yeah. it is. She thinks my character's right. sexy. Oh, oh, look at that. <laughs> Hell yeah. Hell Holy yeah, shit. dude. Hey, that's got a good cockpit in there. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Kind of looks like the Pope Mobile with all the glass around the top there, but it ain't no Pope Mobile because this one's fucking breaking. Grind. Hell yeah. Party in the front, business in the back, am I right? Well, that's I do believe we got business, business all on sides. both ends. Yeah, yeah. That's right. yeah. The plot down there in the front is, although a good time. It uh -huh. is a good time to get that oh, thing yeah. going. Mm -hmm. Fun. Business is being handled. Dude. Oh yeah. Getting and then on the back, on the back <laughs> side, on the back side, you know, whenever you start cracking earth. Oh. Oh yeah. Oh my you god. You need the excavator back there, the big dog. And you know the thing about the seat on this 310J, it turns. Yeah. yeah. It so it's always in the front. You know, whatever you're working on, business can be on the front, both sides. That's right. Controls all around. We worried about those front tires? No, no not at all. That's how roll. they roll. No, that's no, they, they survive anything. Those are standard deer backo tires. Look at the back so tires, like, like, Foxy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You Foxy. Yeah, I'm just asking questions. Foxy, it ain't about the front wheels. It's always about the back. That's right. right. All right, because these rear wheel powered vehicles that you would <laughs> never understand. Yeah, you don't know anything about that, Foxy. You have no idea. I would not know. What do you got? I got friends that know. I don't know. Listen, when you're drifting gears, okay, on a rear wheel, oh. especially for 600 or some ponies, what? you got to watch for like any, you know, plot holes or debris. Of course. Because sure. you can <laughs> and then hit a tree. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> the back end kicks out. <laughs> and then you won't drive that car ever again. Because how are you not supposed to drift it? And I guess, how are you not supposed to hit a tree? Another tree. <laughs> yeah, right. That's my life. Doesn't have to be yours, though. Thank you, Andrew, for calling from the 310J. That's a beautiful piece of machinery. It is. Gorgeous. Take that thing another round. Oh, wow. look at that oh, thing yeah. prop itself up. Lift yeah. Kit. That's why the wheels don't matter in the front, pal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
What about the Sean Watson situation? What about the Sean Watson situation? What about the Sean Watson situation? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> was that, was that a tra- spot on accent? Right? <laughs> that one out of the park. Like, what if she's dude. really dialed in to the NFL? <laughs> The Pat McAfee Show. There will be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we could talk about. Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured, fake-ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. (laughs) Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat the McAfee Show do? starts in three, three two, two, one. one. Welcome back to that show, Hour 2 on this Aaron Rodgers Tuesday, January 4th, 2022. Shall it begin? Avec, this beat drop. Here. Yeah. Yep. Avec is French. Oh, that's right. For with. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I thought it was after. Yeah. Oh, it might yeah. be after. No, no. Avec is with for sure. But in the moment, I really thought I said after this beat drop here in but, French as well, which makes me feel. But Avec is definitely with. And with this beat drop here also works, though. Oh, yeah. What are you thinking? Right. Apre, maybe? Oh, Apre. Oh, there Apre. it is. Yeah. Yeah. Apre ski. Apre ski. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Apre ski is when everybody. Yeah. Uh huh. A lot of snow, I've heard. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Huh? In the ski world, Apre ski, mm-hmm. even the snow continues from what I've been told. Yeah. yeah. Never, Never joined the uh, Apre ski or the ski community, but I've heard there's a lot of energy up in those cabins up on the mountains. Mm-hmm. Always Late the night, early morning. Ice cold beers. Yeah. Why? 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 <laughs> Talks to the table at Ty Schmidt at Boston Connor. Tone Diggs is here. Hey, hey Tone, thanks for that moment in the first hour. Thank, Thank you, Tone. Thank, Thank you, Pat. Got a chance and a glimpse into a actual diehard fan of a team's moment of recognizing that one of the greatest players for their team's history is uh, taking a horse into the barn. Yeah, that's that's right. right. You know, this cowboy still got a little left in him is what Ben Roethlisberger said mm-hmm. a couple years ago. Mm. And that cowboy took that – Last trip around Heinz Field last night, and it was awesome to watch, and I can't wait to hear the thoughts of a man who um, is a college football national champion, Super Bowl champion, Ryder Cup champion, COVID survivor, ladies and gentlemen, A.J. Hahn. AJ! AJ, that was a cool moment, man. Last night was a cool moment, I think. And I don't know if you saw it live or not, but that entire after the game, during the game, before the game, I just thought it was a cool Week 17 Monday Night Football matchup where both teams have a – you know, one completely out. One has to have a lot happen. Just, I thought it was a cool, cool game. Oh, I thought it was great. It was cool to see. And I know uh, Diggs has gotten a little bit emotional. What about Nick? Does Nick feel similar to Diggs on this situation? I don't know if Nick's crying. If the Pens did this for Sidney Crosby, <laughs> yeah. I think he'd yeah. be. But he is a Steelers fan, though. He is. Dying. Yeah, I think Diggs wears his emotions on his sleeve a little bit more. And I did nothing wrong with that. That's just, nothing. Uh, yeah, that's how we choose to handle the situation. But all of Pittsburgh, okay. I think we all saw that last night almost. And, and I let off the show with saying you could actually see some parents of kids that literally told, we got to go fucking honor Ben. All right, yeah. get your ass. So we're going. We got to go on our bed. This game means nothing. We got to go on our bed. Like that is what we're going to do. It's almost like I assume there's people outside as well. It's just good for Ben. Good for the Steelers. Terrible for the Brownies, though. Uh-huh. I mean, it's actually good for the Browns, though. I feel like all of this attention of being on Ben takes a lot of negative attention that Cleveland would be getting if we didn't have this whole Ben retirement ceremony. Yeah, like what a disappointment. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, and now what, Baker's going to get surgery and probably miss the last game? And uh, I don't know, man. There was so much hope in Cleveland, and now there is not. Why did Stefanski say, Chubb, I don't want to give you the ball. I fucking hate you. <laughs> I mean, Peyton, Peyton may fight Stefanski for that. I I, like. He gets very upset about, uh, <laughs> you know, interesting decisions in a football game. That is one, you know, real gem throughout the entire season of Monday Night Manning is watching Peyton hate bad football or decisions that make no sense to him. Nick Chubb not being on the field for a lot of the game last night when Nick Chubb every time he was on the field was gaining a lot of yards made no sense to anybody including Peyton Manning who was on uh, television and you know kind of displaying it for everybody because it wasn't being talked about in the Monday Night Football booth you know it wasn't really a point I, I guess they chatted about it a little bit he would come in he threw a guy to the ground oh this is what Nick Chubb can do then he's not in the field for like 
five, six plays and Baker's throwing seven incompletions or whatever. How many incompletions? Ten, ten straight. straight yeah. Ten yeah. straight incompletions happened without giving a ball to Chubb who was healthy. Like, I don't – what the fuck happened? You know, like, how does that even happen, AJ? <laughs> I have no idea. I, I really don't. I think even – I, I, I went back and forth between the main broadcast and the main broadcast. Me, yeah, me as well. And Eli, early on, when Baker, the, he, they boot him to his left and he throws a pick. Like, even Eli was like, what are we doing here? Why are we boot him to his left? His left shoulder is hurt. You know you can't get turned and throw it. And he doesn't see. And Joku, I believe, was open underneath. Well, yeah, because you probably should never have him booting that way when he has like a broken collarbone and labor and all kind of stuff like just little things like that just seem to add up for the Browns. So you are all, you're leaning towards the narrative that we're kind of leaning towards because the internet started, you know, presenting a pretty valid case. Stefanski was trying to expose Baker last night. He told Chubb before that game, "Hey, pal, we're in this for the long run. I got to do a couple chess moves. Okay, you ever hear a close Sicilian? This one's called close Baker. We're trying to close the case on this guy. We're not going to give you the ball. You're going to be in a jacket on the sideline whenever we could definitely need you. We're going to have this guy throw ten straight incompletions. <laughs> we're going to have him throw ten straight incompletions, a couple of picks, lose this game, and we need to do that because we need to move on because everybody's going to tell us we can't move on because he's the first quarterback to ever win here, gets to a playoff game. Do you get it, Chubb? Okay, need you not to an Antonio Brown thing. I'm just not." going to give you the ball because how does Chubb not think to himself at least once what the fuck you know unless Stefanski had to explain to him or this is just Chubb understands this is kind of how he's is he saying we're trying to save you for the long term like hey I understand I don't want to beat you up in games that don't mean anything no because so does he not like Jarvis Landry does he not like Treader? does he not like Petonio does he, Did he not... answer any of these questions after the game well I'm sure the journalists that always come after my fucking ass for not asking questions ask the right ones I'd assume over there and if they did I bet he would give a very real and open answer I doubt that well and you kind of mentioned it and you guys would know like that shit doesn't really happen in the NFL like I think all those years like the Vikings weren't going to the playoffs and AP was still getting the ball fucking 30 times in the yeah, last, it, you know, like clearly that, it's no, it doesn't. Yeah. Happen. If, if it happened, by the way, why is Jarvis out there? Is Jarvis not a pillar of your team? Why is Betonio out there in the middle of the offensive? Why is Treader out there? Why is Austin Hooper out there? You're telling me they care more about Chubb, which would make sense because he's your best fucking player, but also flip side, why are we not giving him the goddamn ball? I don't understand any of it. So the narrative that Stefanski wanted to, okay, well, let's see. All right, if we got to do this, let's see what happens. And let Baker bury himself is a wild one to think about in the NFL. It is a wild, insane thing to think about. There's so many jobs that rely upon success. There's families involved. But that, that narrative, whenever you start diving through it, it's like that has to be the only – reason why you wouldn't give Chubb the rock. And it, then Aaron said it last night too. He talked about Miles Garrett, how Miles Garrett from the Packers Browns game till now he's been playing on one leg basically. Like if they were resting guys, you'd think their uh, highest paid player and best player Miles Garrett probably wouldn't be out there. Yeah, so what? This just a decision to Stefanski not like Chubb your boots on the ground over there at Epstein's Castle in the <laughs> state of Ohio does, does Stefanski <laughs> not like Chubb? Or what are we doing, dude? I have no idea. I'm telling you like I've tried to come up with reasons in my head of why stuff like this has happened throughout the year even. I know Frank Reich we, we've been talking about it a little bit too with the Colts. I don't know. This one, the, the Browns one, definitely confused the hell out of me. Like, what are they doing? Either way, though, Baker, they picked up his option, correct? So he's going to be there next year, isn't he? Well, is that, mm -hmm. that's guaranteed money, the fifth they year They could trade yeah, him. I, I mean, so, yeah. I guess, who's going to trade for him? What is it? How much 18, is it? 18, 8, I think. Up. 18 million. I, I'm not going to say, like, Cleveland can eat that, but 18 million and a uh, 206 million dollar. Yeah. Does anyone do that, though, where they pick up someone's option? And then Sam Darnold, them? Carolina. Uh -huh. Just happened. Might happen yeah. again. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know. It's 19, it's 18, 8. Nine, oh, 19 million. So if they want to move on, they need to trade him. Or cut him. Yeah, but you'd like to trade him. Yeah, you would definitely like to trade him and get some assets back. But if they if they really want to, they can just cut him and say, ah, fuck it, 18.9 million yeah. in dead cap. We don't care. Someone will pick him up, wouldn't they? Don't you think someone would pick him up and give him a chance, like change the scenery? Like Baker, if he's healthy, he may he may become your guy. Yeah, I think so. I mean, we've seen backup quarterbacks go other places and, uh, like, initially deemed a backup quarterback and then have success. I mean, Gardner Minshew. Yeah. I mean, that's like a Gardner Minshew. Not that, you know, Baker isn't going to be thrilled to be in the same conversation as Gardner Minshew, I don't think. And I don't know if Gardner Minshew is going to be thrilled to be in the same conversation as Baker. So I apologize to both of you. But Gardner goes to Philly after having some success in Jacksonville, another place that never lost or never won. They have some success to place. They change organizations. Get the fuck out of here. We just drafted Trevor Lawrence. We need you. He goes to Philly, has that game, has that celebration with Flint. Then he goes to old Sirianni. He goes, well, all right, listen, what's it going to take for me to be a starter? And he says, not going to fucking happen. Take a hike. 
Yeah. All right, I'll go back up Jalen, I guess. It, like, maybe he'll get an opportunity, I assume, to back up and go someplace and prove himself. And he's a veteran who's been around now at this point, been there, done that, won a playoff game, has been at the bottom. But is Baker another one of those guys that can't be a backup? You know, that, that conversation was, uh, was had about Cam. Is Baker mm-hmm. going to be a guy that you think would be – a backup is what a place is going to have to think, unless maybe he's a starter or something. You think I think someone will give him a chance to start if he's healthy. I, I think someone will give him a shot. Like Teddy Teddy Bridgewater was a starter this year. I think he's better than Teddy. And they'll pay him no money because the Browns – you're saying they'll trade for him, though, to start. You think somebody will trade for him to be their starter or they'll pick him up I if he gets know. cut? Maybe pick him up and give you know take a shot on him and say, give you a – you get a one-year prove-it deal if you become our guy. Like if you can – yeah, because you're already rekindle getting the magic you had. Because you're already getting 19 million from Cleveland, so yeah. this is like the coaching. What's Cleveland going to do though? Who's Cleveland's quarterback there? Jimmy G. Jimmy G. They're Russell go after Wilson. Watson? Yeah. Aaron Rodgers. Deshaun Watson. Mm-hmm. I mean, Mike Glennon. Gardner. Yeah. You name it, dude. Give Gardner a chance. Mike Glennon. You say Mike Glennon? Marcus <laughs> Mariota. Uh huh. Okay. I mean, Mitch Trubisky. Yeah. Fitzpatrick may come back. Oh yeah. Fitz. Maybe Fitz Magic, but also once again, if they Cam were to Newton. move on, if they were to move on from Baker, which I'm not saying they're going to, but if they were to move on, Cam alluded to retirement. Yeah, he alluded to retirement. He did. Yeah. Baker's better than Cam right now. Cam alluded to retirement, though. I don't think he's going anywhere. Uh, maybe I don't. Hope who knows? If he did, hey, hell of a run, Cam. Good run, oh, maybe Cam. Cam. Hell of a run, Cam. If that's the case, but the football gods—that's a real thing. Like, cause you, if you lose your for show money looking for mo money, you might end up with no money. You know, they have some success and stability over there. Now, this year, major disappointment. Huge. But you have no idea what's on the other side of that door. You know, you, they have no clue who's going to come in there, especially with... Could be a lot worse. Well, and it could be a lot better. You have no idea. That's why it's tough to, to win in the NFL on a consistent basis. And that's why you got to trade for a proven player i think yeah personally. i would want that i know i would definitely want a guy not too old it's hard to find though a guy that's a proven vet guy Good like luck four-time like mvp uh-huh, yeah <laughs> like a four-time mvp because is jarvis gonna walk has or- cleveland ever won anything no not uh, since jim brown way back I mean, not in the super Bowl era. they won yeah jim brown football time uh-huh it's a football time they, Ohio won the Hall of Fame because I put it in Canton. Oh, yeah, that True. was a good battle. Yeah. And then yeah. obviously, big uh, Dr. Uh, Dave. Uh, uh, Dave Baker. Dave, Dave Baker. Baker. We ever get yeah. to the bottom of that story why he, he yeah, stepped he away? Retired. He was going to retire, but then a local news found out and leaked it. And it was like a big. So they, they decided to expedite it, they said. I can't believe they did that to Dave. He also uh, Dr. Bullshit. Dave Baker, dude, that's yeah. fucking unbelievable. Is that giant news that is leaking going to hit the internet and you got to uh, jump on it? Yeah, it's it's giant. giant news. Easy. We get it, AJ. Yeah. Way, way to go. go. Yeah. Yeah. Here you go, AJ. Yeah, that was a real Shrek of a play by you, man. <laughs> yeah. All right, way to go, dude. He got a new job already, too. Where is he at? He is the Burger King now. <laughs> the king of Burger King. <laughs> It's uh, pretty sweet, actually. This is disgusting. <laughs> it, his words, not mine. He's a Wendy's guy. Wendy, what was no, it? he's a Burger King guy. He loves all right, all right, all right. Big yeah. BK guy. <laughs> Huge. He did send a thank you card for that. Yeah. We love. Hey, guess we sent him the five hundred yeah. gift, the gift card. card. Yeah, we sent. Him. Hey, thanks for your service, <laughs> Doctor. Thank, thank you, thank Dave. You, Dr. David. Is by, he a doctor? Yeah. Well, of, of Hall of Fame. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. He comes in there and turns it around. On archives he has. Uh, all right, let's talk about some stuff that happened around the NFL. Manning cast, Aaron Rodgers. He said a lot of stuff. What was your big takeaway from it? But that was good. I liked how he uh, he tried to dress like the boys, too. Great shout-outs to you and, and Peyton. Uh, them talking about you was fun. I got to see that. Uh, but, yeah, I think Aaron had a great time on there. He it seemed like he, he loved it getting on there. And I feel like Peyton and Eli, their, like their personality and what they think is funny and how they interact, Aaron – fits in very well well and also there was a little bit of a nerd football talk there whenever he was talking about some play what it used to be and they used to cut it off at this point and this happened and then aaron would grab his scotch mm-hmm. and then peyton would grab his whiskey what <laughs> holy shit it's like we're talking football all of a sudden. and you know peyton reading is quite i by the way thank you for the love to both of them all three of them actually last night i very much appreciate that it was very cool aj thanks for getting me into that golf tournament by the way you're a man yeah. Yeah. AJ. You're, you're a man, AJ. AJ. You're AJ. And, and you know I didn't want to do the five minutes because I don't want people to think that I asked for them. Does that make sense? 
Yeah, I got it. Yeah, so when he was like, hey, would you uh, mind talking for a few there whenever I introduce you or whatever, you know, kind of lighten it up or live it up? I'm like, no, I'm not going to do that. Like, Because Ray Allen's there, Chris Paul's there, mm -hmm. J.R. Smith is there. I mean, the, yeah, the, that could be a tough crowd. Well, the amount of superstars, I'm like, I don't think these people need to think that I was like, give me the fucking microphone. Dude. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, didn't want, I didn't want that to be the case. But from Aaron's side of him telling it, and by the way, we have never addressed that conversation until he told it. He was genuinely just asking me, like, hey, will you do it? Like, I would like, like to hear it i'm like oh so i kind of feel bad that i immediately was like i'm not no way Aaron. i don't feel obligated to give me a microphone either by the way i'm just gonna have a good time and i'm gonna win some fucking golf matches okay i haven't golfed in three oh, yeah. years we're gonna win though we're gonna yeah. win some so then whenever he introduced me you know and it appeared as if there was a time to have the microphone it was like all right here we go and it was I, Stand up is an interesting way to describe that. I uh, did a lot of crowd work. You know? Just work the room, huh? Yeah. That's, that's the best right there. In that situation, you should work the room. And I think it did set the tone for the entire weekend for everybody. It was a pretty good set, by the way. It was pretty I'm good. Sure it was way better. <laughs> think about it. It was either you or probably some MC that didn't really know anything about anything going on. Wow. That's oh, where funny you're you wrong. wrong. Uh, Who was it? Who oh, was, was it Chris Angel? No. Oh, no. no. I'm not taking a microphone if Chris Angel's around No. It's, it's actually a very nice guy. Michael Collins comedy, also known as oh. ESPN Caddy. Yeah. He was, oh, yeah, I know who he is. Yeah, he's a good, good dude. Great dude. He yeah. was he was emceeing it, though. So there's another thing. Like, I don't want to, you know, like, that's a whole nother thing. Because I'm a lot, and I'm coming in hot, and I'm living so by... So is he. Like, he is, too. He's a big personality, like, fun guy. Yeah, but I'm, I'm playing by different rules. Like, I'm, <laughs> I'm telling somebody to go fuck themselves with the microphone. That is a, just a different, you know, sure. he's, he's trying to be as professional as possible while also being entertaining. I'm coming in. We just got off, what, playing 18 holes for the first time in a year or so. There yeah. was also yeah. about a two- to three-hour cocktail party yeah. news set going on before that that Aaron left so out. Many. Yeah, yeah, he did forget about me getting that microphone. I mean, there was a... Ripping shots. And, right we were on, and we were on a plane that was delayed two hours drinking on the plane. Oh, yeah. I mean, it was a, it was a concoction for quite a moment. But, yeah, I did a pretty good 10 minutes, I think. Yeah, it was so good. I, we have it on camera. We have it on film, basically. It was pretty good. I mean, it was, it was pretty solid. There will be in the dock in the end. But I appreciate him for that. And I appreciate you for opting me uh, into that. But that is what the Manning cast does. I feel like we got to see it with Russell Wilson a little bit, Tom Brady a little bit. Roger now. Goodell, same thing, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Hey, he was wide open. Why are yeah. you laughing? The dude was loose, having fun. Well, I was talking about the film breakdown where you're learning, like, hey, this is now we're playing the chess game, you know, and, and you see. You're like, talking Raj? No. no I'm, <laughs> I was trying to finish the conversation about Aaron, oh, my bad. Tom my Brady, bad. Russell Wilson, and Tom, uh, and Peyton and Eli talking about, like, what they're actually That's seeing. That's my favorite thing. I love listening, watching those guys just nerd out on routes and what they would do and how they look at things. Like, I think a lot of people enjoy that. I know I definitely do. I do as well because it makes me feel smarter, even though a lot of the shit they're saying, all right. You know, okay. Yeah. I assume that everybody's doing what they're saying, but this makes a lot of sense to hear, especially from those high level. Now, speaking of high level, forty-one million dollars a year, Roger Goodell. Let's figure out the audio. What's going yeah. on? Can't Sounds like have it. coming it's in. Brutal. Brutal. That, was, that should be popping, dude. Hey, Roger Goodell, what's going on? I don't know who set it up for him, but they're probably going to reach out to us about something at some point. I'm going to say, were you the one that made it? Roger sound terrible on ESPN. Yeah. Okay. I don't need to hear any more from you then. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll have Zito handle this entire thing. Oh, yeah. All right, let's go ahead and have a day. But that was. You know, it was cool to see Raj back in his chair. I assume the peanut M&Ms were right there. Oh, yeah, uh -huh. it was nice to hear him not chilling for M&Ms, you know, just having a real conversation, being a human. What the hell are we doing? What, dude? It's my commissioner, dude. dude he, wore, yeah. he wore a nice casual quarter zip, too. Oh, yeah, yeah it was awesome. Making fun of Peyton for putting makeup on. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> good, so Roger. I love him, dude. <laughs> He was a he lot. laughed a lot. You, you heard Raj basically laughing the majority of the time. I enjoyed him, like... I, I feel like that was the most Roger Goodell we have seen Roger Goodell, right? Yeah, I think you're right. I think that's he, the, the pocket square. He had a pocket square a little bit with Peyton. Got a big laugh. Like, yeah, it was. He was. He was ready. He was just shooting shit, confident. You could see the guy that's behind the scenes as opposed to the person we always see, which is the robot who is saying nothing while saying a bunch of stuff. Mm -hmm. That is what Roger Goodell is paid a lot of money to be, the commissioner of the biggest league, make the decisions, take the bullets, do that whole thing. He's normally super robot. So I enjoyed seeing him open up a little bit. Now, does that mean like I'm going to be friends with Goodell after watching that? I don't know if well, Goodell and I would ever hang out. And I don't know if we would ever. But I did enjoy watching him shoot the shit a little bit. That's my commissioner, you know? I mean, you drink a couple PBRs with the guy. Who knows? Yeah. You know, maybe he you never know. Maybe he gets crazy. It looked like he. Was I'm starting to drink banquet beer, by the way. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Of course, Wars banquet. Hell yeah, Where we go. I'm a fucking real cowboy, you know. <laughs> <laughs> what if?
Hey, what if Raj walked into the like the igloo whenever you have like a, the grand opening? He brings like a nine foot water ball and he's like, "Hey, oh. Pat, hey. here's a housewarming gift." <laughs> <laughs> what if he walks in? What if he walks in, hops up on top of his? He's like, all right, let's try it out. Break it in. I need somebody to like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what if Roger Goodell, that's how we kick off the fan door. Go. <laughs> Pull. <laughs> <laughs> Roger, that's a bit milky, dude. <laughs> yeah. Roger, that's a bit milky, Roger. I don't know if you know what you're doing. Shut the fuck up, Pat. Pull. <laughs> 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 Roger. Yeah. Dying. That would be awesome. Calls what if, Calls it the David Baker bunk. <laughs> oh. I brought in the Hall of Fame Kush uh-huh. with the David Baker eight footer. Let's kick off the FanDuel Eagle in beautiful fashion. What if Roger Goodell was just smoking dope, dude? That would be awesome. Well, that would change everything. What if he was high yeah. shit last night, just shooting the shit with the Manics? Yeah, I could see it. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. He's uh, he's got so many big time decisions to be made. I assume they drug test him because they can't have any uh, substances. Who who drug test? Does he review the owners? Jerry. Hey, you think the owners? And then he? What if he says, "All right, well, guess what? I'm going to drug test you guys then too. If you want to drug test me." No, because he's the one that ultimately has to make the decisions. I think the owners are allowed to do whatever they want. You have to. You think Raj wants to be drug tested? What if? You think Raj, he was drinking, right? Was he drinking yeah, last yeah. night? I think he was drinking a little bit last night, wasn't he? Even if he's getting drug tests, isn't he just going to say, like, okay, I'm not going to suspend myself from my job no, no, as I'm commissioner? Gonna, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's not about the league or the players or us knowing if he's – I assume Roger Goodell cannot be fucked up. He's in the middle no, of $110 billion discussions. I assume that the owners potentially have a little bit higher standard. Hey, you're a designated driver, actually. Uh, We're the ones who are allowed to get – Hey. We'll all do whatever the fuck we want, dude. Mm-hmm. You're the one who has to be the adult in this entire thing. I wonder if that's a part of it. That's a, that's an interesting thing. There's no, I mean, if he's – if I, maybe if something happened, then he could drug test. I don't – who knows about if he's getting drug tested. I don't – I don't. I doubt the owners are pushing him like, hey, Raj, we need to make sure you can only have two beers a week and don't be touching the dope. And I know you're going on <laughs> Peyton and, and having fun, but don't be getting carried away. Like, there's no way they're doing that. I assume – I assume Roger just knows that he can get got anywhere at any time. Yeah. Right. Right. So he just has to yeah. live like. A, he's got to have like a security detail with him. I'm guessing when he's in public, right? Yeah, but I'm saying like if he gets loose lipped, I don't think Roger Goodell can ever get loose lipped. Probably has a couple pops at home on the weekend though, sitting in that big comfy chair, watch NFL football. Hey, Roger, we hope you get a chance to at least have a couple beers and watch a game. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, but I could see jerry jones like last night like calling him and being like hey don't you dare pour another fucking glass of scotch okay <laughs> get a little Keep your loose mouth already. shut uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> talking a lot in that fucking leather chair aren't you in the owner's you group like, chat hey you like one of these <laughs> hey roger's getting fucking too loose oh hey head. what's this little fucking manning podcast we don't need any of this out of rog how about we do the fucking podcast rog is the nfl making money off of this rog that is crazy he has to answer to all of them all the time Right? That's the he job. Got, he has yeah. to take kind of, he's the guy to take all the bullets for them. Hey, help a run, Raj. Nice right, How many more years Raj. does he have on this deal? He doesn't make it to the next CBA, allegedly. This is his, he won't be in the next CBA negotiation. That's why I thought it was a babyface turn for him. Because he's like, all right, I got the deal done. I just negotiated $110 billion. I said we're going to grow the game in Europe and all over the world. We did it basically everything I said we we're going to do. And I don't have to go through the absolute war that is NFL, PA, NFL, CBA that could potentially shut down the world's favorite game. You know what I mean? So it's, I think, I think that's, I remember thinking that. I don't know the exact date, but I, I don't think he's making it to the next CBA. I don't think so. Is he grooming I mean, someone right now? Like, is there I, someone The NFL next probably up? is. Yeah, so. for sure. Brady, maybe? Wow. Just slide him right in. Once Who all votes on the next one? Probably the owners, right? It's that one per club meeting. Is that all it is? Isn't it interesting that for how large of a conglomerate it is, there's what? Probably five people that are actually making yeah. all the decisions. Yeah. And everybody else is like, yeah, we'll fucking do it too. And then they're like, okay, now let's let's see the ripple effect of the billions and billions of dollars out of this room that we just said here. And let's let's watch the entire world change completely out of this decision that was just made out of this room. I don't know how it works up there in the upper echelon. Did they ask? I was flipping back and forth. I didn't see all of Roger Goodell's um, – I didn't see all of Roger Goodell's uh, – Appearance last night. Did they ask him anything about how the NFL operates, or was it mostly just about ball? 
Yeah, not a whole lot of that kind of stuff. No. But I also was flipping back and forth because it wasn't exactly appointment TV, that particular segment. Let's I just say it. The whole entire thing. Yeah, it's the like, whole entire Jesus thing. Christ, Raj, you can't hear anything you're saying. Goddamn fireworks going off in the background. By the way, not Omaha Productions' fault, not Raj's fault. It's just the fact that this is technology, the modern world we're in. If you don't do that on a regular basis, there are problems that could potentially pop up out of nowhere. That's the whole like uh, delay thing, you know, stepping on each other. That happens every single Manning cast. Mm -hmm. And I don't think it ever gets better unless they're all in the same place. No. But there are gems that come out of it that are so good. It's like, thank you for doing the Manning cast this year. But then sometimes I'm watching, I'm like, Probably a couple of little changes we could have made here to make this a little bit better TV, but still, that's a part of it all. I guess that's a, it's like an internet show on TV. It's not. It shouldn't be expected to be perfect. What's up, Nick? Uh, Goodell's contract ends after the 2023 season. There it is. There was a rumor out there. This was a year not or two anymore. ago that Kevin Warren was a potential name. No. Not after what he tried to do to fucking football. Big Ten Commish. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Kevin Warren came out and said we. We've consulted with the doctors. We are not playing football this year. And then the SEC was like, what's that? You ever got one of these? <laughs> Boom, we're playing. Whole season. <laughs> Ain't testing. Fill the fucking stadiums. No, in their capacity, sure. Only 5,000 people will be allowed. We ain't counting, though. Uh -uh. <laughs> those stadiums down the SEC, you oh. remember that entire season? <laughs> yeah. 70, 70K in there. Uh, hey, there's only, they reported uh, 5,450 people here in attendance, obviously all practicing social distancing, and then all of a sudden you hear a wave in a, 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 a thunderous boom from the top. How come they didn't show? Wait a minute. Seems like there's Whoa. maybe 5,000 in that section right there. <laughs> And then go all the way around. Then the Cleveland Browns game. Yeah. Remember yeah. the Browns game? Only which is 6,000 in, in attendance. <laughs> yeah, whoa, whoa, whoa. There seems to be a... If you don't count the 28,000 people. Right <laughs> that you could see. I mean, that is... There's no way that guy becomes the commish. What do you got to do to be the commish? Dwayne Johnson could do it. Yeah. Well, he's got his own league. Yeah, he's got his own league. Maybe he sells... I mean, you don't think he could add that to a, the list That'd of everything else he does? Man, yeah. So there's something called an acquisition. You know, the world... I, I acted like I just created a term there, and that's a big deal. But they could acquire the XFL and then also acquire, yeah. you know, The Rock oh. as its boss. Hey, we'll buy the XFL for this. Also, need The Rock for the next five, ten years to do this. Just like whatchamacallits did to the UFC. Hey, we also need Dana to stick around. And then he's signed multiple contracts since then, he has said. But that is something that maybe, maybe the NFL owners in that one per club meeting go, you seen Dwayne Johnson did? This guy could do it all. Yeah. Maybe he's our commission. Let's just go buy the XFL for what? I don't know. Five, ten million bucks. And then we mm -hmm. get Dwayne Johnson and we pay him a salary that's close to Roger Goodell. And we got we got the president before America got him. That would be something that'd be interesting. Well, what about Gonzo? You know, Gonzo's been in the <laughs> NFL and you I don't know, know if Gonzo wants to step right back into yeah. the firing range. <laughs> well, it can't be worse than where he was coming from, though. Get Gonzo as commission. I mean, imagine being Anthony Gonzalez in your post football career. And just deciding to walk right into a gun range <laughs> and where everybody else goes to get the guns and shoot from, he goes, No, I'm going down this side. And then he just <laughs> he stands at the other end, right in front of all the bullseyes. Yep. And he's like, Go ahead, let's fucking let's have it. I'm gonna represent you guys. You guys are gonna hate me too. You guys already naturally hate me, so just fucking all let them go. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty quick. I'm an athlete. I'll hit an in the park home run at the congressional baseball game. <laughs> I don't know if you guys will be able to hit me, but they brought in a uh, they brought in an assault uh, 50 cal though at the end there. Yeah, if you do recall, mm -hmm. get this son of a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they brought it. He started attacking Gonzo, mm -hmm. and then Gonzo, you know, decided, you know, I don't want to be in front of all the targets anymore. I don't want to be in between the bullets and the the bullseyes anymore. So he retires. If he was to jump back into being a commissioner, takes guts. Oh my Could god, do it. he'd get a lot paid a lot more. He'd be guess. the head of. The, I mean, they floated his name out there to be the head of the PA too. I would love yeah. that. Troy Vincent's another name that was floated out. See, that feels like a guy that he is, wanted to be the PA head though back before Demoris got it. So I think Troy Vincent is a guy though that has been every time I've seen Goodell at any of these. Absolutely. Troy Vincent is right there. Like when I was at the draft, right? I have that round uh, table, circle, whatever the hell it's called, discussion. Symposium. Uh, he's there, and then Troy Vincent's right next to Goodell. And then draft night, Troy Vincent's right off stage. Roger Goodell is there. Any rule change or anything that happens, Troy Vincent is the one that's delivering the video to all the teams. So maybe Troy Vincent yeah, is. Yeah, Troy's the dude. That's kind of what happened with Goodell, too. He was like that to Tagliabue, I think it was. He was following him what around. What a name. Tagliabue. 
That's not how I was thinking. <laughs> 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 but it is pretty cool to sound like that. All yeah. right, let's talk about some other NFL stuff, shall we? Um, 12 Eagles have tested positive for COVID, including Fletcher Cox, Kelsey, and Dallas Goddard. Sirianni obviously has done a wonderful job coaching this squad out of the depths of manure into fully blossomed buds of roses and flowers over there in Philadelphia. The Delosandro subs have been running through all of Philly in celebratory fashion with what has happened with the Philadelphia Eagles. There's people from Delco all the way down to South whatever saying, Fly Eagles fly behind Sirianni. And that's what they were doing whenever that uh, thing burnt. There's a couple of Eagles right. fans uh -huh. when that thing at Washington football team, which has been fixed with zip ties. So, you know, everybody collapsed. That's Not going to happen perfect. again. And they didn't almost killed, they almost killed Jalen Hurts, and Jalen Hurts just took pictures with them, and they were very cool. They have zip tied those things okay, back up. Good. And right. those zip ties, everybody knows, fucking impossible. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, don't budge. You get a package or anything, impossible to break. Washington football team says they offered up medical for all the people that collapsed and almost killed the quarterback for their football team. The people that fell, the four Eagles fans, I guess, we weren't told anything. The only thing we were told was stay the fuck off the field. <laughs> <laughs> so there's mixed reports. Probably some sort of settlement coming because that could have been very dangerous and terrible, handled well by Jalen Hurts. But now they got the COVID bug going into a big game. Do you think the practice matters? The Zoom calls are really the only thing that matters at this point uh, after years and years of COVID at this point, AJ? Yeah, I don't think, yeah. They, these guys missing practice, if they can find a way to be cleared before the game Saturday, I think it'll be fine. Yeah, they may, they may miss a few reps, but it – it may end up, especially some of the vets, helping their body a little bit. Just give them a couple extra days when they need it. Pretty awesome to think that, you know, and that's not that dog mentality. No, no. no. That's not that dog mentality that Coach Sirianni's been talking about. No, it's not. Now, so dogs do get COVID, I just learned, huh, Coach? <laughs> well, you know, we don't need to go back to it. You already mentioned it. Uh, this is on Dan Snyder, that fucking shithole of a stadium. You know, we got poop water spilling all over everybody. Jalen almost gets sawed in half by a goddamn, you know, industrial cattle rail. It's absurd. I mean, I don't know if he's on the list, but that's how COVID got in the locker room. Where you got 8,000 fans on top of our quarterback. You expect a huge outbreak not to happen. It's You're right. It's absurd. like a build-up situation. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I basically I told the guys in the locker room, I said, hey, Enjoy this tonight because we're going to have 15 guys with COVID come tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> Luckily, we already make a playoff, so it doesn't really matter. But, you know, it's bullshit. There is some seating uh, on the line for both parties, the AFC and the NFC. When you forecast what could be wild card weekend, there is some great matchups. Now, this is depending upon nothing changing at all. Mm -hmm. Titans, first round bye. Uh -oh. Number one's in the AFC. Nobody knows that right now, is acting like that right now, or expected that going into the season. Aside from when Julio Jones got brought in, there was a lot of buzz about the Titans, but then that kind of dialed back whenever Julio didn't perform, got hurt, he was out, all of a sudden they lose Derrick Henry, what's this team going to do? And all Vrabe said is, we fucking fight, man. We're the most physical team on the field, we're going to win. That, right now, number one in the AFC home field event, congrats to the Titans. Yeah, congrats. unbelievable. Vrabel. And if you go down to the AFC, the Chargers would then take on the Chiefs, 7 versus 2 matchup in Kansas City. The Colts would take on the Bengals in Cincy. And then the Patriots and Bills would have a divisional trilogy in the first round of Super Wild Card Weekend, which is also going to be same game parlay holiday weekend. Oh. I think FanDuel's cooking up some real shit for same game parlays for Wild Card Weekend, where I believe people are going to be able to get up to like 50% of their money back gambled wow. on same game parlays. Okay. Damn. I think so, yeah. So we're potentially going to have a bunch of same game parlays that we have put together out there this by the way i'm saying way too much too early this has not been figured out yet but <laughs> super wild card weekend is going to be awesome and there's going to be a lot of ways to win a lot of money while still getting money back and site credit as well i think a lot of emails a lot of conversations have been taking place but super wild card weekend is staring down greatness already let alone the same game parlays holiday that we're going to be uh, a part of with Fanduel. this is going to be the greatest weekend in sports and the way it looks right now i think the colts are sitting pretty baby mm -hmm. come on cincinnati Bengals are a team that's incredibly hot but that's not that far of a trip. They play in Cincy every other year for the preseason. That is going to be an electrifying matchup. We probably end up going to that game, huh, AJ? All of us? That'd be awesome. Yeah, when will that be? Well, that's the thing. Yeah. TBD. That's the thing, because we would fly in for that game, but if it's afternoon game, we don't want to miss any of the night game, but we could do what we did whenever we flew back to Plum, just have that game 
on a phone, and then we're home by second quarter probably for how close since he is. Whatever the case, matchups are looking good. Then on the NFC side, Packers, uh, number one home field advantage already secured. Eagles at seven versus the number two Ram squad, which could change. The Rams and the Buccaneers could swap depending upon what happens, which would then lead to the Niners, Cardinals, Cowboys, and the Saints have an ability to make it in there as well. We're talking some... Pretty sweet matchups for Super Wild Card Weekend in which, obviously, the playoffs kind of dwindle out all the bad and only keep the great. But I love what we're already projecting two weeks out here. Yeah, if things happen how they're supposed to, like the Titans will probably beat the Texans. They'll stay at the number one. The Chiefs will probably beat the Broncos. They'll stay at the number two. Bengals have the Browns. The Bengals don't know if they're playing anybody yet, but they'll probably stay at the three. And then, yeah, you got the four or five with those guys. And then the Colts going to Cincy is crazy. There might be some movement if – because. If the Niners lose to the Rams, who are playing for the division on Sunday, and the Saints beat the Falcons, and the Saints get in at that position, I, that's like that's the the movement that's happening right now. Saints Bucks, yeah. Saints Bucks is what that is Buccaneers Achilles, especially with all the drama going on. So there is, I mean, let alone if the Colts lose and then Steelers backdoor oh, yeah. and the Raiders Chargers tie. I mean, there is a lot of different scenarios, but it's shaping up to be a fucking good one, and I'm here for it. And nobody could have expected the Titans to have a fucking yeah. first round bye. No way. And Derrick Henry, probably the freshest he's ever been coming back. Like, usually the story is, you uh -huh. know, will he have, will he be, you know, worn out by the end of the season? But now he's, what, six or eight or nine weeks where he hasn't played? Like, he'll be fresh going into the playoffs, only playing at home, only in two games to get into the Super Bowl. Like, I think the Titans have a real good chance now if he comes back, like, ready to go. Because how long would it take for him to be in, like, football shape? Technically, when he missed that much time. Yeah, I don't know. I, I guess you would have to ask AJ a lot more than it. You ever, you never had to. Re you did have to rehab injuries. Was there a difference between when you were going through rehab, which is very meticulous on training and building back all of the muscles in whatever area was uh, had surgery on it? But football shape, everybody says it's so much different. Obviously, I was tired those first couple punts. You know, I was fucking <laughs> winded from those three, four steps. That first kickoff where I gotta oh. go. Oh my god! I walk back eight yards and over three yards. Mm -hmm. And then uh, when I have to run that entire distance and then act like I'm on cover, I mean, I'm winded. But when it talks, uh, when you're talking about like a Derrick Henry coming out of re um, rehab or whatever, not, it sounds so bad, for an injury, not for any addictions that he has. Do, do you think the game shape thing is a real thing? And will that be tough to just get dropped into the most intense football that happens, which is playoff football? Well, luckily for, for Derrick Henry, he's been there in college and the pros. He's been in those huge moments. Yeah, being in football shape is a real thing. Like, you kind of have to play in games to get in that kind of shape. But you've seen the crazy workouts Derrick Henry does oh, yeah. and all the stuff he's doing. As long as he's able to run and get his legs right to where he feels like his legs are under him, they'll be fine. Maybe a few less carries, maybe a few less reps in that first game back. But I think he'll get right back into it and feel pretty good. Let's go straight to the coach of the year conversation because Vrabes is on there. And it's unbelievable what the Titans have been able to pull off. And I think everybody is not talking – as if Rabe should be winning this thing because what Matt LaFleur and the Packers have been able to do, not just this year, but his first few years as an NFL coach, Zach Taylor, with what the Bengals have been able to accomplish over there. Hey, hey, hey. They got a lack of funds over there, which is a <laughs> no scouts. <laughs> Shout out Dave LaGreca, busted open. Vrabel there, plus 350, third highest odds. Bill Belichick at plus 4,000. So there's quite a drop off between Vrabel, Zach Taylor, LaFleur, and everybody else. Although Belichick should be in. Sirianni's there, Cliff mm -hmm. Kingsbury's there. I'm, I'm sure they are pumped that they're back on the winning side of things. Although, what does that mean for next week? We don't know. Frank Reich at plus 4,000. But what Vrabes has been able to pull off and accomplish is fucking unbelievable. It is. It makes no sense. And I Without love anybody it. noticing for some reason. Why don't people have any? Like, I feel like nationally people have no idea that the Titans have the one seed right now. I think it's because Vrabes, what, aside from him saying he cut off his penis to win another Super Bowl, <laughs> I, I, there's not a lot of, right? Taylor Lewan. Is an incredible personality, and we know him on the internet, but I don't think they're doing a lot of TV. I don't know if, not that you have to do TV to be big, but I don't think they care, right? I don't, I don't think. No, they don't care. That's what, that's like their MO. Like, they just find a way to win. No one gives them a chance. Everyone says they're going to get beat. They don't think they're as good as they really are. And then the Titans come out and beat you. Like, that's what they do. It's, that's, it's the Braves. It feels perfect for a team coached by him. Yeah, and listening to him speak after that game was awesome. I've never been around Braves, especially in that moment. But to listen, you know, and then see the reaction from the team, everything that you think is happening, uh, it's beautiful to see that kind of culminate in there. Because, and I start thinking back to the national attention, like, could you imagine if there was a New Year's Eve country concert in Dallas? 
You don't think Jerry Jones or a Dallas Cowboy would be a part of that entire thing? There was an entire New Year's Eve party in every aspect of Nashville. They were in like four different bars. They were in right down uh, Broadway there in the middle of it. And there wasn't one single Titan there or anything like that. You know, like I don't think they do much of like trying to, because Nashville is, right? Nashville is one of the hottest cities in America, I think, yeah. at this point. I don't know. They got more, more people moving there. Yeah, it's like, it's like Florida right now, I feel like, with people moving to Tennessee and Nashville. But it's just like everything else. You just got to win. If you win, everybody will follow. Yeah. Up. It's just, and Vrabes knows that. I think they appreciate that. But the Titans fans don't appreciate the lack of respect that they get because Dan Zeus gets it from the Titans fans because I think Titans fans watch every single day. They hear the local news. They see who's hurt, who's out, who's in, how much this could affect. And then they see them just get wins after wins. And they see Tannehill not get talked about at all as a quarterback that does good things. I think that is why Titans fans are so um, – you know, offended by the national takes. And I can respect it. I mean, I went up on a stage on Broadway for a couple hundred thousand of them and had to say what I had to say because they forced me into it. That's, That's right. right. They did. They did. Reggie set you up pretty well. Reggie buried him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then they fought back to Reggie. Yeah. It's like, oh, wait. So you are going to Connor. All right. Well. Reggie's calling in a the lefty then. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, you know, I'm coming in. I don't want to have to do this, but I will do this. What a night that was down there. That place was elected. They should have the draft in Nashville every year. Yep. Every year they should have the draft. It's built for it. It's a hosting city. It's a presenting city. It's a performance city. And they have the entire uh, the entire main drag. Not yep. only is ready and willing, it's like they're set up for it. It's like that is what their thing is. It is awesome down there. I can't believe I got to be a part of that. What a joke. How long was I on the stage for? A minute? Yeah, a minute yeah. 50. And then you had a walk-off chug right after with a couple of the boys. I'm saying we did that entire trip down there. I sat at a round table with uh, Roger Goodell, Troy Vincent, and a bunch of vets. And then uh, then I go over there. I buy a shirt on Broadway because I didn't have a button down. I'll I saw never the, forget the bus ride. Oh, yeah, the bus ride over to the thing that we almost missed. We were, a bunch of Hall of Famers on there. Yeah, what are we doing on here? I have no idea. <laughs> and then we go sit in the back, me and Shane Leckler and the boys start drinking some beers. Yeah, it was awesome. And then Chris Ballard texts me and says, we're going to trade the pick. Sorry about it, dude. <laughs> so, well, I don't worry about it. Chris. Got to catch up with a bunch of people. He's yeah. like, I'm joking. We got a good one or whatever. I'm like, all right, here we go. Then you go out there and just kind of do your thing. And then... I guess that's what Greenberg, Mike Greenberg said that was the night he was introduced to me. And he was like, really? Yeah. He said, I like that guy. I was like, thank you, Greeny. Thank you, Greeny. Thank you. Greeny. Thank you, Greeny. Tease and peace, Greeny. Yeah. And thank you to the NFL for asking me. Tease and peace. What happened to Greeny? Yeah. He's got, he's got COVID. COVID. Does he? Oh, he does. Yeah. Yeah. He's yeah, been he's, out all week. Yeah. yeah. Should be back Friday. We miss you, Greeny. That's two weeks straight without Greeny. Yeah. Because last week you Hey, was this, this is big time football, Greeny. We need you. Need you, Greeny. Need you, Greeny. Need you, Greeny. Hope you're okay. Um, but, yeah, that was the night Zito just reminded me that I was forced to pronounce the name wrong. Yes, mm -hmm. not to get lost. We'll they talking, told you to pronounce it. it like that. We don't need to talk about it. What was the name? Don't. Okarica. Bobby. Bobby? Okarica. Stanford, right? Yeah. Smart. Big brain. Big brain. Big good brain. player. Really good player, too. Good yeah. player flies around. Good player flies around. A lot Great. of good players on that Colts team. How did you say his name? Well, the way I was told to. I bet a thousand that night. Uh -huh. Okay, not one word bobbled, pal. What'd they tell you to say? Okariki. Yeah, Okariki. Yeah, I, I told you before on here. I, I did one of his games. We, we called him Oka Bobby Okariki. Well, you guys are wrong. And yeah. you guys actually set the table for me yeah, to be wrong on a much started. grander stage. So you AJ think, was the one. Yeah. So you're misleading me. Damn yeah, I, you. I, 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 this misinformation. Can't have it. Go to hell. You were putting misinformation on program that I was watching. And it led me to go on a stage in front of multiple hundreds of thousands of people live, and then I guess a couple million afterwards they're saying, Bobby Okariki. What a name, what a guy. Here we go. Either that or that lady knew, and right before you came up, she said to like her assistant, like, watch, this, watch this shit. And he's, then he's wearing jeans, dude. Yeah. They'll have no idea. Yeah. <laughs> How about Roger Goodell? Giving me a dap, mm -hmm. you know, and then he says, this is what you chose to wear, huh? I was like, oh. <laughs> Seems to be a thing everywhere I go. People will judge me. Well, don't worry about it, Raj. Okay. And then he gave a good laugh. <laughs> okay, good luck. I can't wait to hear it. He was very nice. I assume at one point he was, oh, no, we have made a massive mistake. <laughs> but thank you to them for letting me out there. Because the Colts had an opportunity to let me do it. Remember, they had the orangutan from the goddamn zoo. That's, That's right. right. And the uh, NFL, I would like to see that. 
It was terrible. It was god awful. And I was I wouldn't have watched it normally. They got the they got the wrong one then. They needed another orangutan. No, this was the orangutan. Yeah. This is Rocky. Mm -hmm. This dude was in a uh, music video with Fergie. Was in a movie. I know everything about this goddamn orangutan. Okay, I had to put this orangutan over whenever it first came to fucking Indianapolis. This is a superstar orangutan built for the camera. Orangutan Rocky. Yep. He bobbled the fucking draft though. That's I'll right. I'll tell you that right now. He fucked it up. And that but he pointed. Was he pointing a name or something? Yeah, he was supposed to push a button and he just wrong button. button. Took his time. He said, nah. I don't want to do it time. today. No. You guys got me in a cage, okay? I'm shitting all over my friends. <laughs> I don't want to push a goddamn button. And I would assume since Rocky and I did have a relationship before then, Rocky's a kind of fucked up that like three Colts retired this year. Two of them got to announce picks. The only one that didn't is the guy that fucking I, I have met before and gave a little fist bump to. Yeah. So he's like, I'm gonna fuck this up. <laughs> For my pal. Shout out Rocky, dude. Shout out Shout Rocky. Thank you, Rocky. I think Rocky's still down here. I need to go check, check so. the tape. Well, I don't know, actually. Well, they went back to him again because it was such a travesty the first time. I was down here the other day. I think he's still there. Rocky? Yeah. Put him back in the wild. Really enjoying life. In yeah. That. Six by six glass box. Well, you stop it. No, Seriously, you don't understand any of that bazoo. It's beautiful. It's an entire oh, it exhibit. Is. It is. Yeah, it's beautiful because it exhibit. costs what? Two hundred. You don't even understand that these zoos <laughs> take care of these and extend I'm, their lives. Yeah. Well, that's fine. I'm sure they do. But let me tell you something. Rocky was just begging to get baked until he passed out that day. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus, just let me burn alive. Oh, sick of no. this thing. <laughs> There's Rocky. Yeah, yeah. Really Rocky pumped. looks excited, doesn't he? Is that Rocky? That's Rocky, right? Oh, that is Rocky. Yes. Is school it? hallway. That's in a, a cage. bad picture. It's Does Rocky picture. not have any legs? What? Bad angle. Where is he? He's Where squatting. Is he? He's oh, like he's squatting. squatting. He's squatting yeah. I don't see. That's an knees. interesting photo you chose. Yeah, are you sure? Rocky's no. got headshots, dude. <laughs> so he's trying to cross the border. Let's, I'll get you a headshot. I'll get you a headshot. One. It is. Is he, is he currently at a? Jesus. Is he current? It does seem like he's trying to get through TSA there with whatever could be potentially happening at customs. I mean, where? I don't think that's the exhibit that he lives in. Is that Rocky? I mean, that's a, <laughs> what's he? Wait, is this guy like a famous orangutan I don't know about? Yes, yes! that's Rocky oh, right there. There he is. There he he's is. a big squat guy. He does like get comfy. <laughs> yeah, that other one looks like a photoshopped one though. He I had to. Know. He had to literally push one of those buttons, and I think he pushed one of the other ones. Yeah. He <laughs> And then they were knocking, like, hey, you got to push the fucking middle one. And Rocky said, don't tell me what to do. Yeah, <laughs> okay, he got me in this glass box of emotions already. Yeah. I love Rocky. It wasn't about Rocky, but it was about the decision that was made to have Rocky. I mean, Rocky fucked it up on purpose, <laughs> I think, just like Stefanski did at Baker last night. Boom. All right, we'll be back in four minutes with some phone calls. Then we got Aaron Rodgers for this beautiful Aaron Rodgers Tuesday, January 4th, 2022. This is the Pat McAfee Show. Cheers. Why is football the greatest sport on earth? And do you think football is the greatest sport on earth? And why do you like football? That's a really deep question there, Pat. I know. I think I'd get a good answer out of you, though. Like, I, I think you'd be able to talk about it in a way that I think a lot of people haven't because you've been at the pinnacle of it for so damn long and inside of it. And your brain is a pretty fantastic one. We've learned here over the last few weeks, mm -hmm. obviously. Last few weeks, that's it. That's all the time we've learned that. I think it's the greatest sport in the world for one main reason it is a true team sport where it is damn near impossible for one person to dominate an entire oh, game God, if you look at other team sports uh, uh basketball with five guys on the court i think you've seen multiple players over the years uh, maybe one player or maybe one or two players on a squad be able to dominate and win championships baseball you can have a dominant pitcher uh, and win championships soccer you can have a dominant forward and or goalie that seems to be a little more of a team sport, but you don't have 11 players engaged at the same time on every play. It is truly uh, uh, a sport reliant on every player on the field to do their job in order to be successful. And I think that's why at times, you know, certain star players can get uh, maybe too much credit and, and maybe too much blame on the flip side because it does take so many players at the same time in three phases to win football games uh, and I think that's the beauty and the draw of our sport is that something new happens all the time because you are literally dealing with 11 humans on the field at, at one time who all have lives outside of football and there's distractions there's uh, a reliance on, on coaching there's a reliance on preparation there's a reliance on diet and performance um, 
I just think there's so many facets to it that you see something new every single week and I think that's the beauty in our game. Uh, when it comes to the love that I have for it, it's rooted and I think like any uh, any player who's played for a long time, the, the love is not just about our sport, it's about competition. And I think there's nothing in the world for me that fills that need and that hole I have like competition. I think we, you know, if players who play for a long time at a high level, you have that uh, need to be satiated uh, competitively and, and it's a love of going out there and going against guys and being in an environment where you know that uh, nothing is guaranteed. And that's why I, at times I've taken uh, umbrage to people saying that it's easy because it's not easy. It's never easy. And I think that's the beauty in our game is that you see things new every single week. It's never easy. And your only thing you're guaranteed is, is the ability to compete. Uh, I love that aspect of it. I love competing. I love going out there and harnessing the fear of failure where I think so many people who maybe don't love football as much, the root of that is is a deep uh, fear of failure. Uh, that you might go out there and your best might not be good enough and that's not okay with you. Hey dude. Dude, I'm in the middle of a chance. Oh, no. Hey, dude. Oh, no. oh no. People are saying, no. people are saying you don't have it anymore. People are saying you can't drink what is it? an ice cold Bud Light. Oh, what? Yeah. Yeah. What do we do? What? Bring it back. Bring, bring it back. Why? This Aaron Rodgers Tuesday is presented by Arby's. It's the time of the year when everybody is talking about resolutions, and my resolution is simple. Get myself the high-quality meats from Arby's more often. I'm talking the classic beef and cheddar, the white cheddar mac and cheese, and the premium delicious nine-piece chicken nuggets. To make 2022 even better, all of these are available on the two for $6 everyday value menu. These are full-size sandwiches and meals with the high-quality meats you can only find at Arby's. They don't shrink them down to a junior version like you might find somewhere else. Nah, they pack that thing. That's yeah. right. Woo. Two full-sized Arby's sandwiches for $6 daily, the best deal in the game. Go get yours today. We appreciate you, Arby's. Also, take off the bread. You go keto. You got good meats in there. That's right. Oh. Good meats, a lot of options in there. Shout out to Arby's. Shout out to you. Shout out to AJ. Shout out to Jacksonville Jaguars fans saying, hey, this weekend, we're going to dress up like clowns to let Sean Khan know that Trent Baalke is not welcome here Ooh. as general manager for the Jacksonville Jaguars no longer. I guess this is a big thing that is cooking on the internet. Ari Mirov is reporting it a Pro Football Focus at my sports update. Unhappy with the team keeping GM <laughs> Trent Balk. Jaguars fans are planning to show up through Sunday season finale wearing clown costumes. Fans also changed their Twitter avatars to a clown with Sean Khan's mustache and have been replying under every tweet from the team account. <laughs> It seems to be like they are very passionate. Normally, you would think, all right, 1,000, maybe 2,000 people will do this. I can't wait to see how many big red noses are oh, in the crowd yeah. this weekend as the Indianapolis Colts come to town to beat the fuck out of the Jacksonville Jaguars and eliminate all hope in Pittsburgh of the Steelers making the playoffs. Yeah. How many do you think are really going to show up and do this? All of them. I, I honestly don't know, you know, because I live in like such Like 300? A, well, that's what I was – I don't know, because I live in such a, you know – a silo almost on the internet where I'm like, that looks like a lot of scrolling. Hey, that looks like a lot of people committed to this. Tickets got to be, what, six, seven bucks probably on SeatGeek? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's going to be hot as fuck down there. We know yeah. half the people commenting about it on Twitter aren't going to go to the game, though, either. If you get 300 clowns in one section, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah all you need is one section low, close, with big red noses and things. That'll you'll be able to walk down, right? Don't you think they'll be able to matriculate down to closer seats, if, even if they have to buy them up top? I actually think that a kid... Um, 
maybe for a Golden State game, was sitting up in the nosebleeds. That's right. Photoshopped a ticket to get him down into the lower one because he saw a bunch of seats were open at the end. And at the end of the game, they can't scan you to get in there. So the genius wizard Photoshop guy got himself courtside to see something happen. He was like, I'm so proud of this kid. I'm so, <laughs> yeah. I'm so proud of this kid. Maybe they'll be able to do that whenever the uh, Jaguars two-pool palace, yes. party palace, as the big, bad Indianapolis Colts and Jonathan Taylor come to run a mud hole in their fucking team. Maybe they will kind of find their way down to the side so that we see a bunch of big noses. What if Jax dresses up like a clown? Oh, could you imagine Jax coming off the top of the light, bringing the game ball down? <laughs> Everybody look up in the sky. Jackson DeVille is coming. He hops down. Big red wig, oh, big nose. Yes. Oh, Shod oh, mustache on. Oh, my God. Maybe, Sh maybe Shod Khan's on his back. Ooh. Ooh. Shod, I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're back in six minutes with uh, Aaron Rodgers for a much better conversation than the one we're currently having. We'll see you then. Cheers. I hate a lot of people for the way that they acted after that Friday thing. Do you? Is, there's no way you're isolated enough that you don't hear any. You, you had to have heard. There's some massive names, politicians. I mean, your name has been spoke by a lot of people. There, are you just, because you're like, a, hey, love will cure this thing. How are you not going to hold a grudge everybody? And do you know that you're probably never going to win an MVP again? That's probably never going to happen, right? I think that's, that's a legitimate, <laughs> legitimate statement. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Legit though, like that, there's a lot of people that vote for that that I think are not faint. Like, do you, how do you isolate that? How do you stay away from that? Cause you're talking about everybody on earth talking about you. That's not getting you down at all. I don't know, that's incredible mental toughness if that's the case. Well, you know what? I think first, if you find your identi identity in yourself and you don't find your identity in the opinions of others, mm. uh, you don't need that validation and that love from other people, you can get it from yourself. And that's not being selfish, that's just learning how to, uh, in a healthy way, love yourself and respect yourself um, and believe in yourself. And it definitely was tested, you know, by some of the comments that I, that I heard and saw, I'm human. I mean, you know, stuff can, can definitely hurt your feelings. But uh, look, I shared an opinion that is polarizing. I get it. And I misled some people about my status, which I take full responsibility of, those comments. But in the end, I have to stay true to who I am and what I'm about. And I stand behind the things that I said. And I, you know, have a ton of empathy for people who have been going through the worst part of this pandemic, which has affected all of us in different ways. But so many people, um, you know, like I said, with lives that were lost, lives that were forever changed. Um, and I have a ton of compassion and empathy for those people. Um, and I have tried to help out, you know, as much as I can. Yeah. Um, the, the other stuff is so out of my control. And there's going to be people that don't like you and they don't, don't and, and, and hate you for things you said or might not even understand what you said or know what you said. It might just seem a, a headline. And that's fine. Um, I, I believe that people are entitled to their opinion. And even if it's the opinion that's unfavorable of me. But I'm going to continue to try and be the best version of me uh, moving forward. And I'm excited about uh, getting back on the field as soon as possible. Hey, do you Hell know yeah. uh, if offense or defense is getting introduced this week uh, in your game? And have you thought about it all? Like what the reaction may be if offense is introduced and you're the last guy out? Have you thought about that? I think it is offense, and I'm excited. There's nothing like running out of that tunnel last, especially. You think it'll be different one way anyway than your normal, uh, you know, how they normally respond? I'm not, I don't know. I'm, uh, I hope not. I hope they show that on, on, on the it. network. Oh, that'll, that clip will make its way. Oh, yeah. That clip will make its way around. And then. Hey, oh, Jay! No! no. Robert Mathis went down. We're gonna have to get oh, another one. Thank goodness. Aaron went down. This is all your fault though, because remember you pushed everything. Yeah. Your towel I, did I didn't oh, move. No. AJ, oh, no. watch. Can we please have a moment of silence oh, for those two incredible pieces of art that I have been very proud to have on my desk? I'm gonna be serious.
<laughs> Robert's left foot is gone. Hey, he still gets to the fucking quarterback. <laughs> yeah, right. he can. Let everybody know he still gets to the quarterback. <laughs> we need to get some Oh, that cat is laid down. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is time <laughs> to uh, <laughs> debut a brand new oh! Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. Where did that go? Oh. Yeah, he's right before yeah, calling timeout here. He's trying to take down the entire defense. Yeah. Yeah. I give him. I give him. Uh, I'll take the under of 10 days before he's broken. I'd like to shout out the artist that did this. The artist that did this. Big Sky Customs, Bob Bryan. Thank you, Bob Bryan. 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 I'm sorry your work's going to get broken on this show, Bob. Dude, dude. It's going to get displayed on this show, Put it on that whiskey bottle here. It's got both bonds for this this thing here. Wait, what's it for? Is it like a sand wedge? Uh, just, yeah, anything close to the green. It's like yeah. a 60. Yeah. I think it's like 60. A little rescue club. Yeah. I used it one time on a course. I uh, I duffed it four times, and uh, I said, that one's going to stay. That one's never seen a course again. Is that the one you got to just uh, use the same stroke as a putter? No, that's the uh, the chipper. The, oh, that little chipper. oh, that little thing that you use in the fringe area? Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. If I ever get in the pro golf, which is probably going to happen after this whole thing, that one's going to be one of the spots in my bag. Yeah. They say use the nine. They're illegal, though. What? I think those little chipper deals are illegal. Uh, oh, bullshit. Yeah. You it's all right. You won't ever get close enough. I will, dude. Wait until you hear what we're up to. <laughs> and then, you know. I mean, I don't care. You could put nine golf simulators in the Coliseum. It's not going to make you a pro golf. You you sure? It's not a Coliseum, by the way. It's a fucking igloo. It's right? Get it right, you asswipe. We've already talked about it. <laughs> Wake up. You guys all at the same time. Yeah, well, it's a branding thing, you know? Uh, how many times do you have to <laughs> tell, tell you what, the it same is thing? mesmerizing just watching you do this. It's crazy. Right? <laughs> it really, it really is. is. How about you get some air under that thing? That's nothing. You have like three inches of pipe. Oh, I mean, yeah. well, it's it's guy come on! You DJ. piece of shit. How dare you? I, I you have dude. some awareness. The Pat McAfee Show. There will be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we could talk about. Yes, sir! Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured fake-ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. Nope, nope. Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat the McAfee Show doing? starts in three, three two, two, one. one. Hey, welcome back to that show. Hour three on this Aaron Rodgers Tuesday, January 4th, 2022 years after the year zero was deemed. If you want to have a time conversation, we can have that later because now it's time yeah. Oh, yeah. for Aaron Rodgers Tuesday. Listen, there's a lot to chat about, okay? Number one in the NFC has been secured through the playoffs. Home field advantage at Lambeau has been secured through the playoffs. The MVP for his fourth and going back to, to back. Because he did it last year and then he's doing it this year, which means he's going back to, to back. back. MVP is all but secured. Living a high life, coming fresh off a Monday Night Manning appearance in which they broke down some football, told some stories, and even had a little book club moment in the middle of that thing that set the world on fire. There's a lot to chat about. A.J. Hawk joining us now is a man who just won his second MVP in two years. A man who just beat the living dog shit out of the Minnesota Vikings on Sunday Night Football. Had an electrifying appearance on Monday Night Manning in his home field advantage all the way through the playoffs. Ladies and gentlemen, Aaron Rodgers. Yeah! Whoa, dude! Dude, good hat! Thanks for the hat, guys. Appreciate it. Hey, no problem. Happy it looks great on the head right there. Hey, you you are a beanie guy now at this point with the hair, huh? Has that become the full winter look, yeah? It helps keep it out of my face for sure. I mean, I can, you know, tie it up, a nice little bun or a pony, but I enjoy the, uh, the beanie to keep it all in the same spot. All right, well, let's lead off with last night on Monday Night Manning. You have mentioned that uh, broadcast on this show numerous times throughout the season. You told them at the end of it, you enjoy it all. Going in there, what were your thoughts? What were your plans? And how did you think it went? I thought you crushed it on there, pal. And thank you for the love. You're a very nice person for that. Too kind. Thank you for the love. But I thought you crushed it last night, Aaron. Well, I told the truth. And and I, I really enjoy that story uh, about you coming through and helping me out in the uh, – 
in the Bahamas. You know, I was I was embarrassed when I asked you to do stand up. You know, and I was like, oh crap! I just, you know, did I ruin it uh, by asking him to do something that wasn't really appropriate? And you were unbelievable, bro. You took the mic from me. You started on the jokes. I mean, it was legendary. And I just, it was one of those moments like in, in Step Brothers where they're in the garage and, you know, talking about all, and they keep, you know, John Stamos, uh, good housekeeping, you know, and, and do we just become best friends? That's how I felt when, when I watched you give that stand up performance. And I'll always be appreciative of that. And, oh, that's awesome. and what a you performance, were, dude. you were, you were a legend then, but last night was fun. I, I enjoyed watching. Uh, you know, I, when when those guys are on, I do watch Monday Night Football, and I enjoy enjoy the guests and and uh, Bill Carr. Uh, you know, talking about all things Pittsburgh and the commissioner and his quarter zip, and then obviously Snoop Dogg was amazing, and and I got to bring it home. But that was it was fun to be a part of that. I, they do such a great job, and they have such high level conversations about football. It's fun to uh, fun to be on there and, and uh, add a little something to it. You ever think you uh, you could do something like that whenever you're done playing? I'm not saying with Peyton and Eli, maybe with Peyton and Eli. If you guys all got in the same room together, like, is that something you could see happening? I mean, I don't know. I think it'd be fun to, to do something like that. Um, you know, there's been, uh, obviously, I've seen some critiques that they don't talk enough football. They're not following the game action. You know, there is a little bit of a, you know, Who two cares? seconds. Let them do what they want. Yeah, they're fucking manning. Yeah, there's that delay that sometimes you're talking over each other, but I love it. I think it's great. You know, they have some great conversations. They poke fun of themselves and each other. There's some great videos that they show throughout the time. They do a good job of teasing their guests, and uh, it's it's awesome. I love it. I think, you know, in, in being uh, – thank, thanks to you, Pat, and the encouragement, being a big fan of Ted Lasso, uh, one of my favorite characters on the show is Roy oh, Kent. And friend. Roy Kent – is unabashedly yeah, yeah. himself. And when he goes on the program and talks uh, football with those guys, that to me is how I would, <laughs> you know, who I would kind of relate to as an analyst, you know, that, that sharp-witted uh, honesty. Maybe not as far as he goes because, you know, he, he used some real colorful language and some of the, you know, critiques he had. But, but I do enjoy uh, people who can be themselves and not the cookie-cutter, cliche-ridden, uh, stuff that that we've seen from time and time on TV, and that's why I do appreciate and, and enjoy, you know, some of the some of the guys you're seeing, uh, you know, men and women in in the business who are, uh, you know, making a name for themselves, uh, you know, uh, a few on TV and a few in the uh, in the broadcast booth. We've gotten the pleasure to work with Greg Olson, a former player, a few times who's called our games. I think he's a, he does a fantastic job, and I've actually watched a few of his games that he's done. Because I enjoy his commentary. I think he calls it like he sees it. He's insightful. He does a good job. And, and uh, you know, we were all spoiled growing up by, by watching, for me, you know, Keith Jackson and Dan Fouts in college and John Madden and Pat Summerall and Al Michaels, Frank Gifford and Dan Deardorff on the Monday Night Football so long ago. And, and there was just such a, a special flow to those broadcasts. And, and there's a, there's some great ones going now. You know, I enjoy uh, enjoy watching Sunday football and we work in the, you know, the NFC is Fox. So I enjoy uh, immensely, uh, you know, working with Joe Buck and Troy Aikman and Aaron Andrews you know, on that team, which has done so many of our games over the years. They do a great job. You guys need not hug each other. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> Look, I've, I've known EA for a long time <laughs> and I think the whole thing is obviously a little bit strange. You got to do some sort of, you know, eight yeah. feet apart interview. And that's my friend, you know, the same way I'd, I'd uh, hug a friend seeing him on the field or hug a guy on the opposing team that you have respect for what you play against. Um, you know, look, I, I do what I'm told in those situations about keeping distance, but I'm a hugger and, and I enjoy seeing seeing my friends, you know, post game. You are a hugger. You are a lover. You're a hugger. You're a hugger. You're a hugger. Yeah, you are, okay? You're out there doing your thing. Um, and I know there was people, especially after watching you talk football with Peyton last night, where you guys were talking about some play where you decided to cut it, and you actually saw Peyton, like, stiff, like, straighten up a little bit, and Eli as well. Like, those conversations that only a few of you can have 
with each other, I think are what make the Monday Night Manning really cool. Tom Brady and he had a couple of those. Russell Wilson, I think he was in the middle of breaking down film as it was happening. I think those high-level conversations are sweet. But all I could think of while I heard you speaking that is there's no way this dude retires, right? You love the game so much, it feels like. Every single time you speak about the game. Now, there's obviously a lot of shit that comes with being an NFL quarterback, being the MVP, being a celebrity. But you said you love ball. I think every time you speak about it, you prove it even more. There's no way that's ever been a thought. Has it really? And have you ever thought about the future, aside from the Jeopardy, have you ever thought about the future in that type of sports media world? Uh, not really, to be honest. You know, I, I, I enjoy, uh, you know, watching uh, men and women who do it well at a high level. Um, I think, uh, you know, there's a dedication to the craft that the best ones have. It's, it's fun. And it's very evident when you're in production meetings with people who, uh, who love it, who spend time on it, who are very uh, particular about their questions. You know, they want to waste your time. They ask really pointed, uh, solid questions. And, you know, just like, you know, in the last week, people were talking about their interaction with Madden and how fun that was to production with, with them. I've always loved working with Al Michaels. And you guys have had Al on the show many times and, and I, I know he's talked about how much he enjoys those production meetings but but being there with him and Chris and Michelle and Freddie and the crew it's a lot of fun I mean those are really fun conversations and Al always has you know one or two anecdotes that uh, that make you smile stat he might bring up or a memory and and those are fun and, and 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 you love those but I've also given a lot of my life to this game you know I didn't start playing until eighth grade obviously played four years in high school played three in college in my 17th at some point, you know, the ride stops and you got to get off. And, you know, you, you want to, I think, still be able to play, still be able to walk, still be able to have, you know, cognitive brain function when you're done playing. Those are important. And uh, I've really been trying this year to just stay in the present as much as possible. I know that's hard because people want to, you know, they want to talk about, uh, you know, my future and, and what I want to do. And I respect that and I appreciate that. But for me, I, I can't. I can't, you know, have two feet in the in the past, you know, living in the nostalgia of what we've accomplished and the amazing memories, or two feet in the future, thinking about, you know, the the, the decision uh, decisions that are looming moving forward. I've just really tried to, to remain in the present, and that's allowed me to just enjoy the little things. I said it last year how special that was uh, to me, and, and a lot of that is just the mindset, the perspective, you know, what you focus on and where your focus is, your energy flows, and, and my focus Ooh. has been on on this team and these guys and the relationships that I have with the with the players and the coaches and the front office and the equipment guys and the trainers and, and the cafeteria staff and all those things that make uh, every day going to work that much more special. I think that allows you to just live with a little bit more gratitude, a little bit, a little bit more joy every day. Hey, speaking of awesome. of someone on your team right now who's an absolute stud, obviously, Devontae Adams, and we know how what you think of him and how unstoppable you guys are, which is very fun to watch, but there's – Reports say that if they don't come up with a long-term solution for him, he'll be tagged next year. So likely, Devontae is going to be on the Packers next year. You guys have this rapport. Could you ever see yourself building a rapport like that with anybody else, especially this late in your career? And before you get to that, Aaron, look, at these are real stats. I don't know if you know this or not, but Devontae Adams, 151 targets, and I know in the quarterback world, targets. You got to just stay around and dominate, man. Why would you go anywhere else? Uh, A.J. Hawk, <laughs> Green Bay Packer legend, saying his thing. But 108 receptions, that's the most retired. by 58. 1,411 yards, that's the most by any anybody by 984 yards since 2020. The stats between you and Devontae, it's a joke, Aaron. It is why? Watching you two play, that back shoulder is like 7 11. And whenever they said he was probably going to get franchise tagged, just like AJ, I think we all thought immediately, like, whoa, whoa, that's a, that's a little bit of a different thing we hadn't heard yet. Well, that's definitely a possibility. And that's, you know, one of the things that, that uh, a lot of older vets were trying to fight against in the last negotiation was to eliminate the tag because it uh, doesn't allow for the, uh, the freedom that free agency offers. Um, but yeah, that's definitely a possibility. Why would you, you know, as a team, ever want to let uh, let that guy get away? Uh, he's obviously already cemented himself as a Packer Hall of Famer, and he has a legitimate shot to be a gold jacket guy, you know, if he continues down this path. You know, I've talked uh, about my own personal feelings on the Hall of Fame and how it should be somebody who's top three, at, top three of their position for an extended amount of time, uh, years. And obviously, Devontae's proven that, uh, you know, at least the last three years and the numbers that he's put together and, and the incredible um, accolades that he's achieved. But, yeah, I mean, there's, there's obviously something real special about our relationship. And I've had, you know, some great ones with a number of guys over the years. Devante seems to be, 
you know, like I said uh, last week, you know, the most talented guy I've played with, but he's he has an incredible focus on the field and an incredible ability to communicate his thoughts in a way that uh, gives the guy pulling the trigger a lot of confidence and throwing the ball his way. So I'm, I'm thankful for him. I'm thankful for, for our relationship. Uh, I'm thankful for his leadership, uh, the way he's led his room, the way he's spoken up at times. He's He's got that perfect uh, leadership dynamic where – uh, he knows when it's his time to speak, and based on his ability and what he's accomplished, he has a platform. Guys listen when he talks, and he uses those opportunities to clearly and concisely deliver uh, kind of the focus uh, that's that's needed for the guys to get on the same page. So I, I, I truly respect him as, uh, uh, obviously his talent is undeniable, but I respect the way that he's grown uh, as a leader for our football team. Is he always open in your eyes? Because there was a couple back shoulders where it appeared as if the guy had perfect coverage. There's nothing at all that can happen. And Chris Collinsworth was trying to point out the late hands lift that veteran wide receivers all kind of do. And I don't know if the two that were necessarily spotlighted were the best examples of that, but that does happen on a regular basis. Uh, yeah, you probably thought the same thing. You just watched it back. But, yeah, is he always open? Is that in your mind? Is it like if you see some sort of coverage where, okay, there's only one human that's going to be in the area of Devontae, is that just an always-on thing? in your mind like if whatever happens I know I have this dude that is going to make a catch for me is that something that is is a real thought for you how can it not be I mean the guy's proven that he's going to make make a lot of plays for you so that's definitely in the mindset I think there's certain times we're a little more aggressive throwing him certain types of throws because you feel better about the possibility of a catch uh, you know the, the, the game is about percentages it's about making the highest percentage decision each time and and that can change uh, based on the score of the game, the time of the game, the momentum uh, that, that's going on, where you might need to, to take a higher risk in a certain situation and throw a ball that you might not throw in the first quarter or in the third quarter to kind of get a jolt. I felt like, and I, I mentioned it, you know, that I kind of predetermined and already throw it to Devontae. I felt like that we needed a little bit of a jolt uh, getting going, and, and you know, we hadn't been great on our first drives the entire season. We only got a field goal the other night, but I felt like, you know, getting the ball to him early was gonna was gonna get him going, get him in the game, and 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 when he's rolling, our entire team obviously plays a little bit better because you want to get your best player of football as many times as possible. And uh, AJ has one, but I, I got to follow up on that because I actually wrote this down in my notes section as I was watching the game because you've said that percentages thing before because I've asked you memes of, ah, uh, oh, fuck it, Devontae's down there somewhere, and you said there's no fuck it throws. There's percentages higher or lower depending upon the play and who we're against and who it is. Has Alan Lazard raised in the percentages whenever you go, off oh, fuck it sometimes? Because there was a throw, I think it was down the left sideline, you dropped it in a bucket where he was clearly covered, and he and made a big time fucking play and Lazard has made a few of those have you like felt him raising in your like confidence level in the middle of the game is that because of off the field stuff is it because on field performance what is it just chemistry building well off the field we've definitely gotten closer this year um you know we've both been in the uh, unvaccinated category uh, the entire year so that you us, sons of <laughs> bitches that puts us in a separate category of you know workouts and rules and restrictions so there has been more time spent together which has been great he's, he's a great human i mean he he really is he's a big-hearted caring guy uh, who really cares about his craft and improving he does all the little things he doesn't have a you know an overpowering ego he has a very healthy ego and I think that the Rams game was a turning point. He had a couple opportunities in that game and didn't come up with the plays. And I know he was disappointed. I was disappointed. And we came back against Chicago, I believe, the next week. And I threw him a ball on, like, third and 16. He was around a deep uh, deep cross. And as I threw it, it looked like one of those, uh-oh. And Allen went up and made a contested catch, you know, kind of over three guys. And maybe it was that play, you'd have to ask him, but I think there's always plays in our career that give us kind of a course correction, where we might have been going down one way mentally, confidence-wise, um, belief. One thing happens, and we immediately course correct and go in, a, in, a, in an opposite direction, which is, you know, can be negative, for sure. There can be negative plays, but in this case, it was a, a very positive play for him. And since then, he's made a number of contested catches for us, Big plays. He caught, obviously, touchdown 443, which was awesome. Uh, I'm really proud of him. And maybe it was that play. Maybe it was just an, an inner belief that was strengthened uh, during that week. But it does often take plays like that to, to get guys 
in a different headspace, and I'm, I'm proud of the way Allen's responded, and he's put together four really good games. Hey, so what's the plan for you now these next couple of weeks, and how quickly after you guys Especially dominated the Vikings did you guys start talking about what, what the plan may look like here leading into the playoffs? Well, right away, actually. I mean, there's a conversation in the locker room. Uh, Tay and I had already, uh, you know, we had a conversation pretty quickly after the game. Um, and then Matt and I had a conversation. We had further conversations yesterday. But, you know, the plan is to play. Um, you know, there, it's it's a double-edged sword that often, the, you know, the, the media can use either way. If we go out and play, uh, you know, we risk injury, obviously. But there's risk every single time you step on the field with injury. Uh, what's the point of doing it? Uh, if you go out and then play great in the divisional round, well, of course, that's because they played last week, you know. But like in 11, you know, we, we were 14 and 1. A lot of us set out the last game. Matt Flynn went out and made a bunch of money balling out. Um, shout out to Matt Flynn. Down shout, out. Mm-hmm. shout out. Uh, love, right? love Matty, one of my favorite all time teammates. Um, and then we went out in the divisional round, played against the Giants. And made a bunch of mistakes, you know, turned the ball over, fumbled, gave up a Hail Mary. And everybody's like, well, that's because they didn't play in week 17 against the Lions. Obviously, they were rusty and this and that. And I don't necessarily believe in that, but I, I feel like there's some to, to momentum. And I've talked about momentum on this show before. I'm a believer in it. And, and we've been playing a lot better on offense the last uh, half of the season. And I think it's important for us to keep that momentum going and, and go out and play. I'm not sure how long, you know, that means to play, but, but, uh, you know, I know there's a lot of us who would like to go out there and, and play and play well. The ones that are injured that we're hoping to get back, you know, you'd love to see them get some time in this week. Most of the time, uh, age, you know, you know, we're a little conservative, I think, with injuries. So I, I don't maybe expect a lot of those guys to, to be out there. But there's exciting prospects down the line of, of people who can come back from injury. No Bakhtiari this week is what I just heard. Yep. Uh, mm-hmm. No Bakhtiari is what I just heard. I mean, that's not breaking news, but you said, you know, with the Green Bay Packers, the way we do things, a little conservative, don't look to see it. Maybe drop them in deep end, see if they can get their feet under them a little bit before a big-time playoff game, but also let's keep them healthy until we are. Okay, I like what you just did there. A little information, a little passive-aggressive there. Whenever you talked about uh, sitting or playing, you said a lot of people have ideas. Peyton Manning, you asked him about last night. I got to be in a locker room whenever we were uh, – in. I was a rookie, so I don't say anything. I just sit there and kind of – that team was pissed that they had to rest the last two games. It was Peyton and Robert and Freeney and everybody basically on that squad, Reggie, you name it, goes down. They wanted to go perfect. Like, hey, no team, 1972 Dolphins were the only ones that did it. We win 14 straight. We don't lose until we literally decide to lose, and that decision was made above Jim Caldwell's head. A lot of people on the internet were like, Peyton's burying Tony Dun- – well, Tony Dungy wasn't even the coach then, I don't think. And maybe they did it a bunch of times when Tony was the coach. But when I was there, Jim Caldwell was the coach – and I don't think he was making that decision at all. We end up losing in the Super Bowl, so it's not really talked about much. But I don't think there was many people happy about potentially losing it there. It's such a – especially now with college bowls. Have you heard the college bowl conversation? That thing, it is all – I mean, right now, every decision that's made is being scrutinized. Yeah, and I don't necessarily need to add an opinion to that. I think that there's a lot of pride that, that is associated with college football, but now there's a lot of money involved in it too. Yeah. And with the NIL and with agents getting involved, there's a lot more cooks in the kitchen who are telling you whether to play or not to play. When I was, you know, my my last game at Cal, we played in the Holiday Bowl after somehow getting bounced out of the Rose Bowl uh, by some real uh, nefarious voting uh, situations. Oh. Um, but there wasn't even a question of whether or not we are going to play in the Holiday Bowl. Now we went out there and got our butts kicked by Texas Tech. And Mike Smith, you know, one of our linebacker coach, ceases to uh, – you know, remind me about that, but, um, but there was no, there was no, nobody was doing it. You know, nobody was not playing. Now, obviously there's, there's so much money on the line and, and other people involved in that decision-making. You've seen a lot of guys not play. Um, you know, I think it's those kids' decisions. I think there's, there's a lot to be said about the pride of playing, but, but, uh, you know, there, there's, uh, it's a different, uh, different ball game in 2021, 2022 than it was back in 2004 making that decision. Hindsight is the only winner in all this shit. You know what I mean? Hindsight mm-hmm. is always the winner. Hindsight is always right. And uh, when people have to make these, like, for instance, you playing when you already got an MVP. By the way, congrats, dude. Yeah. Congrats, dude. You already got the MVP, already got the number one seed all the way through the NFC. You playing, a lot of people will point at and be like, Aaron played. You know, Aaron, Aaron went out there and played when they already had this whole thing locked out. And then on the other side, they'll be like, well, what if? that? It's just... It's it sounds never- like about two series, maybe. 
Yeah, it does sound like he's going to complete some like passes. Yeah, it does. Doesn't it? It does sound like that's the case. Maybe a first half. Maybe a couple tuds. Any maybe? records to go get? Maybe get that ball out quick. Get a few touchdowns and call it a day. Yeah, you know what I mean. I still had five hundred. Uh, <laughs> still had five hundred passes uh, attempt under 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 five interceptions. Mm-hmm. Only quarterback in the history to ever do that. I mean, that is that. What, that's what we're looking at on, on Sunday. Wow. Let's stay safe. Let's go win some football games. Let's go ahead, Ty. Aaron, uh, after I don't know how much you watched the like the post game stuff last night with Big Ben, and obviously you know you're like you said you're kind of focused on what's going on right now, but you've also talked about you know how much respect you have for guys like Kobe and Tim Duncan who played their entire career with one team. Like if you did watch any of that stuff with Ben last night. Does your mind ever kind of wander to like, oh, it would be cool, you know, like if whenever my time is done, it's in Green Bay and I kind of get that reception and like can close the book on my career. Like, does your mind drift to anything like that or not really? Are you just focused on what's going on right now? I mean, I think, you know, me, of course, of course, uh, you think about those things when you're when you're me. I mean, I think that's a part of uh, uh, a part of the uh, perspective and and nostalgic appreciation for being in the same spot for 17 years. And Ben, like I said last night, Ben and, and Eli and Phil were in the draft right before me, you know, and, and seeing those guys and the careers they had. And, uh, you know, until Phil went to Indy, you know, those are guys who were one organization guys. It's super rare in, in professional sports, and there's a lot to be said for that. And so I just felt, uh, you know, a lot of, a lot of gratitude for, for being able to compete against Ben and, uh, you know, I was thinking about how, how special that was for him, have his family down there. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting because one of my favorite players growing up was Barry Sanders. And after, after the Niners and being a fan of Favre, I was always a fan of Barry Sanders. I just loved the way that he ran. He was so elusive. He was a trailblazer in his running style. He handed the ball to the official after he scored a touchdown. I just felt like he was just so classy. And if you remember, he retired with like a – you know, like a little note. Hey guys, uh, thanks. It was fun. I'm out. And I always thought how cool that was. You know, he just he loved the game, but uh, he never was was bigger than the game. And I think that's a great way to do it. I think to get the fanfare and respect like Ben did at Heinz Field last night was awesome as well. You know, I think he does. He deserves that. He's given 18 years. He's an adult in Pittsburgh. You know, he's given his life. Uh, I think he said last night almost, you know, nearly half of his life he's lived in Pittsburgh and played for the Steelers. It's pretty special. So I think there's 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 some positives to both those things. But, um, you know, I don't think uh, I said this. I, I would never want a farewell to her. I just think that, uh, you know, that's that has worked for some guys and been great and, and cool. And I respect that. But um, that's not something that that I, that I want. When did, did you or Ben start this, you think? <laughs> Who started doing this first to the fans? Because they talked about it last night by Riddick Greasy and uh, Levy. They talked about the fanfare and the love between city and quarterback, city and quarterback. Because Pittsburgh and Ben, you know, he came from a factory dad, blue collar. He bought into Pittsburgh. He was out on the south side in mm-hmm. North Carolina. They saw him hammering booze whenever he's young. And he right. won a bunch, and he showed up, and he was tough, and he fought through injuries. And there's a lot of this. And I don't know if he's doing it just to his family, but he's also doing it to all of Pittsburgh. You do it as well. Who do you think started that? And when did you start saying this to Green Bay? Do you think it's because – you, you didn't think they heard enough? Like, it, it's, you didn't get to explain it enough? Was there – why did that all start, you think, for you at least? I just think, you know, there's special moments that happen at the end of games. And that walk off the field, Ben, is a special moment. And I've just always enjoyed that. And you can't help but have a deep-seated love for your job, for uh, the gifts in your life, for the opportunity – and for the response from the fans in that moment. And for me, it was just an outward expression of an inward feeling uh. of just love, love and gratitude for the years of support and the years of love and appreciation for what I've, I've accomplished on the field and what we've accomplished. And so it was, you know, it's just been a, you know, an outward uh, representation of how I feel about the fans uh, and how I feel about the, uh, the amazing opportunity I've been given uh, to be quarterback in, in Green Bay for all these years. You ever think about that? Like when you first got to Green Bay and you first got in the lineup, like, okay, you're replacing Brett Favre, this country dude, awesome, you know, gunslinger. You come in from Cali, probably Silver Spooner, like, oh, you know, everything handed to you your whole life. <laughs> yeah. You come into this hardworking, gritty town in Green Bay, and you know how the people are. 
and you eventually won him over through your great play. Like, did, did you ever think it would turn out this way? Uh, I mean, I hoped for sure. I knew I was going to be a little different. I wasn't, uh, you know, I wasn't tackling my teammates and, and you know, doing all things Brett Favre, you know. Wranglers, old, you wranglers? Right, wearing the Wranglers and pumping up the copper sleeve. Uh, <laughs> it works. I, I knew I was going to do things a little differently being from Cali, but, uh, you know, I think an important part of being a, a quarterback face the franchise is embracing the culture. And I feel like I've done that. You know, I've, I've lived here for 17 years. I got friends outside of football who live in this town. I love the interactions with the fans. I mean, they basically know, you know, where they could possibly see me. It's one of like three places. Um, but I, I enjoy the culture here. And I've made my own kind of uh, bingo list. Or not really bingo, maybe it's more like a scavenger hunt list of things you got to do in Green Bay. That's why I always tell like I tell the young quarterbacks in the room or some of the young players, you know, here's some of the things you got to do to ingrain yourself in the culture of Green Bay. I'm talking about going to a supper club, you know, going to a fish fry on Friday or Saturday, you know, going to a supper club and doing that. You got to go ride the roller coaster at Bay Beach. That's an important one. You know, you got to spend time in Door County. You got to go to the Frosty Tip in Dykesville. Oh, yeah, the Frosty yeah. Tip, dude. The that place don't fuck around. It's a good place, man. <laughs> <laughs> but there's some there's some core kind of you got to go ice fishing. There's some core Green Bay, uh, Wisconsin things that, that I think are important to, to kind of uh, in, ingratiate yourself with the community and and with the culture. And I've I've embraced those. You know, even eating cheese curds, uh, which unless they're fried, to me have absolutely zero taste and definitely no nutritional value. But it's one of those things you just do to, you know, to become a part of the culture. And I've, I've, been, I've enjoyed those and loved those and, and loved uh, my time here. I mean, I'm a Cali boy still. I, I like warm weather and, and I love going to the beach. And, but uh, I do enjoy the long uh, frozen winters here in, in Green Bay as a nice change. I think I asked you last week, but I want to follow up on it. You're like a small town guy, you know? And a lot of people at your position, especially nowadays – would be trying their, especially with the celebrity that comes with being you, you know, you're covered. There's fake yous coming out of coffee shops in the middle of Los Angeles in the middle. You know what I mean? Like there's you, the fact that you still choose and want to be in a small town, I think is, it, it says a lot about the person that you are. Honestly, I, I truly, I truly believe it. Do you, do you recognize that? Do you see yourself as that type of person? Is that something you're very okay with? And it's not that big of a deal because you know, wherever you are, you can make the most of it anyways? I think so. I mean, you know, although I have a, a house in Southern California now. Malibu, it's a nice one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've seen it on TMZ. Yep. It is so nice. That's a nice house, dude. That elevator goes from the top <laughs> yeah. all the way down to the bottom. That place is nice, dude. Yeah. We've seen it tight. We've You've seen, seen it. it. We've, We've seen, it. seen it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're close to getting an invite, Pat. Ty, you're already invited. Oh, uh, I'm happy. I don't care. Ty, FaceTime me. Of all your, I will. Connor, because of all your book breakdowns, you're probably invited too. Okay. Oh, oh, FaceTime me. Big day. That's awesome. That's yeah. a Malibu we've seen on the internet. Anyways, yeah. But, but I, I grew up in a small town, man. I grew up in small towns all over Northern California. I mean, I lived in places nobody's ever heard of. I live in, you know, Forest Ranch, Magalia, Lakeport, Ukiah, California. You know, uh, moved to Oregon, back to Chico, California, a college town, you know, right in the in the valley there. Closest big city is probably Sacramento. Uh, it's a it's a farming town. It's a college town. It's blue collar people. It's a small town vibe where everybody knows everybody, but it's big enough where there's, you know, new people coming in and the college life brings a fun energy to it. But I grew up in a small town, so I have appreciation for small town people and and the mentality uh, of a hardworking city like that. And that's why, you know, even though when I went to the combine, I've told the story before, I went to the combine, I came back and, and my offense coordinator said, Hey, how, how was the combine? I said, man, it was great. Except for green Bay. I said, that was a tough interview. I said, but good thing they're picking down at 24. I won't be around. When I <laughs> <laughs> uh, Famous last words for sure. But when I got here, I knew that uh, it was going to be a good marriage between you know, how I grew up and where I come from and, and this town. And, and I studied it. I mean, I studied uh, the area. I got to know, uh, you know, the town and the surrounding areas, the region, spent time in northern Wisconsin and 
western Wisconsin and Door County and Madison and Milwaukee and every town in between and went down to the Wisconsin Dells, which is the water park capital of the country. Oh, yeah. Very proud of it. And, and, you know, I got to know the, the people here and what they're all about and what makes, you know, what makes this, this region so special. And I embraced it and embrace it this day. And I'm, I'm so thankful that I've had 17 great years in this state and, and uh, enjoyed every one of them. Oh, uh, see the way you ended that sentence. A lot of people were, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. Yeah. It is now time for my favorite part of the week before we wrap this thing up. And Aaron, we can't appreciate you enough for doing this all season long. Two MVP seasons, two Aaron Rodgers Tuesdays. I mean, you tell me. Let's not not put the, you know, the cart before the horse or whatever the saying is. We did last year. Remember, it was we did did last year. Last year we were celebrating for like four or five weeks, it felt like. Well, yeah. Last year there was some other things going on. There was, (laughs) you know, some certain... Uh, statuses that might, uh, you know, might come into play. But um, is there a reason you're playing so fucking good? You think? Are you comfortable with yourself? Comfortable with the offense? Why is it you think? Because right now we're seeing you at. You're about to pick up your fourth. You're 37, I think, and you're playing. It's like you're running still. Scoot, scoot. You're running. MVP chance are raining down as you're still running, just as fast as you're always running. Seems like your arm is only getting better at this point. Is there a reason? Is it because? Just what the state of mind you're in, the the age. What is it you think that makes you play at this level at this late age of your life? Well, I'm 38. Uh, Happy birthday! Hey. 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 We missed a couple. We missed a, couple. Birthday, uh, a little over a month ago. Speaking of birthdays, we got a big one coming up in uh, two days, I believe. Who's that? That's right. Yeah. My birthday is coming up. Thank you, Aaron. For oh, is it? Oh, oh, oh shit! Oh, oh, good oh, friend. Oh, good friend. I had no idea. Yeah, you got a Capricorn on this show. Is about to turn thirty-eight. Oh, cool Capricorn! Yeah. Yeah. Big astrology guy. Yep. Throw these yeah. C's for the Capricorns, dog. Capricorns, the unicorn Capricorn. of astrology, bro. Fucking anomalies, man. Every one of them. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> no, but Pat, I think I'm a bull. And this will foreshadow the the book I'm recommending uh, this week. But it really comes down to and and uh, pardon my French, but uh giving less fucks uh. I think that it, it's a it's a maturity that comes from aging from making mistakes from failing from being too sensitive at times from taking things too personal at times and it's about growth and learning uh, not to be indifferent because I think indifferent people are uh, terrified of, of of making choices and it's a it's a cold place to live it, it's about choosing what to care about and the things that you do care about it's less things it's not trying to be a part of every conversation or or, or get involved in 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 everything or, or uh setting yourself up to be offended about certain things it's it's caring more about specific things and less things and and with those things it's it's finding ways to solve the problems because true happiness doesn't come from eliminating all problems in your life i believe it comes from solving the problems that you have and dealing with the pain and the suffering that that is natural in life and is a part of life it's not fleeing from pain and suffering and running from those things and not dealing with the emotions of situations it's looking at those head on and saying how can i solve these problems and make my life a little bit better and that's what i've tried to do the last couple years and i've talked about in the show as well it's about perspective and when you, I truly believe this, when you focus on the things that you have more than the things that you don't have, you allow yourself to let gratitude sink in. And when the gratitude sinks in, it, it is always accompanied by joy because you're focusing on the blessings that you have, not on the things that you don't have, the things you wish you had, the way your life, you wish your life was that much better. You wish you had this, you wish you had that. You'll always be unsatisfied. But when you take solace in the fact that you're where you're supposed to be, and that life is going to come at you with pain and suffering and failure and frustrations and mistakes and just trying to solve those problems and do a little bit better next time. It allows you to, I think, be a little gentler with yourself and admit that you're a human. You're going to make mistakes. You're not going to please everybody. There's always going to be a 500-pound elephant of, of uh, you know, possibly hatred and, and malice waiting for you with every decision you make, and that's just a part of life. you got to deal with it. And and, uh, and and just try and be better the next time. So you feel freer, it feels like, huh? You kind of feel free. Yeah, there's a liberation that comes from 
uh, caring less about the things that don't really matter in this life, I think. And, and I will say, you know, if anything, and I know the two of you, is, is, you know, the best on this show, and I, so I won't speak for the other boys, but I'm sure they're very similar. There's a lot of joy in being unapologetically yourself. And I think in life, we respect people the most often who are that way, who don't try and change or be different or, uh, you know, grow meek in situations that, that require courage, that go quiet in situations that, that require communication. And that's what I appreciate in both your friendships is that you guys have always been yourselves. And Pat, I haven't known you as long as I've known Asia. I sat next to Asia for nine years and I have so much love for him and appreciation for the friend that he is. But I always admired and and was inspired by the fact that AJ was always himself. And he believed uh, that who he was uh, was exactly who he was supposed to be. And he didn't have to be different or put on a face for anybody. He was unabashedly himself. And I think there's a lot to be, uh, you know, a lot to be gained from, from doing it that way. And, and what I love about you and the boys is that's who you are. You guys show up every single day, not with an agenda, but with an open mind and, and create conversations around important topics. And then you just be yourselves, your goofy, crazy, silly selves that I think is endearing to so many people who are turning off the, the mainstream media and, and the pundits and the negativity on TV and turning to people like yourselves and shows like yourselves where they can come and have fun and learn something and be inspired by people who say, you know what, I'm going to be myself and I don't give a fuck about what you want me to be, what you think I should say, or who you think I should be. And I think there's, there's, to me, that's why I truly appreciate and am inspired by you guys, by your show, by people like yourselves, because you're going to keep on being you and not shrink, uh, you know, to, to be something that you think people want you to be. So kudos to you guys. Well, there was no reason to turn it into a compliment of us, but AJ, you're the man if you were the one that potentially led to this man being more comfortable and being his own skin and playing better football than he's ever played. It has been an honor to watch, sir, and we are very grateful that you join this incredibly professional, journalistic, yep. right. upstanding, what? successful show. What? Yeah, yeah. Those things that were left challenges out of it. all the misinformation that's thrown our way. We what? always push back, right? On this uh, yeah. program. Yeah, on yeah. this hey. program. Yeah, hey. thank you. Thanks for creating a safe space for me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We, I, I want to let you know, though, it's fun to watch, and we appreciate the hell out of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Love you, Thank you. Hey, thank you, Aaron. Thank you, Aaron. I, I got can't see the other boys. Are they doing it, too? Yeah, yeah. yeah two hands. Everyone <laughs> oh, yeah. Everyone will turn them up there. I think Ben was first. Whoa. Uh, well, we gotta we gotta look Whoa. back on the timeline and when certain decisions. I'd say the same, AJ. Well, we don't know when he made some decisions to stop doing. Ha! Oh, yeah. oh, yeah, that's, right. Right. that's either here nor there. But let's get to the most electrifying part of every single Aaron Rodgers Tuesday. Although we have a group of stooges, we have been a part of a book club that has run wild all over bookstores across this country and globally. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for book sixteen of the Aaron Rodgers Book Club. Drum roll, please. Obviously, The Alchemist, way back. So many books ago. Right. It was such a good read, I could forget about it because of all the other incredible books that have come after that. The Answer Is by Alex Trebek was absolutely legendary. Then there was a couple Bible-length stories that were told to be put out there that we haven't finished yet, but we will get to. Book 16 of the Aaron Rodgers Book Club is... First, let me tell you what it's not. Ayn Rand. This might, this might disappoint some and, and cheer some others, but it's not Atlas Shrugged. Oh, okay. Nice. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's uh, good news because I didn't want to have to push it back. That is a um, large book. That is a big book. I never it's read not, that thing, I, but I heard there's a lot of stuff in there that people don't like. It's Yeah, I actually have never even read it. So I just <laughs> make it seem like I'm smart. Uh, but the book of this week uh, that I I actually it's thought, openly fucking with people. Oh, that is awesome! I, <laughs> I foreshadowed a little bit. Is by Mark Manson. It's New York Times bestseller. It's a it's a quick read, and it is called the subtle art of not giving a fuck. Shout out, Mark! Hell yeah! Hell yeah. yeah, I like that subtle Ooh. art. That's the type of artist I want to talk about. It's it's a great book. It really is. It, it's. Uh, and, and like I said earlier, it's not about indifference. It's 
or, or not giving a fuck about anything. It's actually just giving a fuck about less things and Select. focusing on the things that really matter in your life and not getting bogged down or, or swamped by, uh, by things that ultimately don't really matter. And there's a lot of wisdom in this book. It's a book for anybody, people who don't, you know, like cursing, like me cursing or like reading cursing might not be the book for you. The F words used a number of times in the book, it's in the title. But, there's, but there's a lot of, a lot of wisdom in the book. And obviously millions of people have read it and I think it can really help anybody uh, who feels kind of, uh, you know, kind of mired in a, in, you know, in a rut or overwhelmed by life at times. And then the wisdom in there is actually, there's a story about Buddha early in the book um, and, and not being a Buddhist, but having an appreciation for, uh, you know, the Buddhist teachings. Um, a lot of it is embracing, like I said earlier, that pain and suffering is a part of life. And I think, you know, because of what we see on social media so often, the greatest of the greats, everybody's best life on social media. I think there's a draw that that, uh, that we have to have the next best thing. Our life has to get better in some way instead of realizing that there's real pain and suffering that goes on all the time. And that true growth, in my opinion and in Mark's opinion, is achieved through embracing the pain and the suffering, knowing that that's part of life and then attacking the problems, which actually leads to happiness, not a not a whimsical search for the meaning of life or happiness outside of you but looking in your life and 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 looking at the problems that arise embracing them as a part of the growth in life that failures often lead to the greatest successes and and struggle is often followed by uh, your greatest expansion and focusing on the things that really matter and truly giving a fuck about those things and it's really you know been meaningful to me uh, you know, especially over the last couple of years of really trying to focus on what's most important. And, and it's, it's having the courage for me to stand up for the things that you truly believe in and not worrying about uh, the things that don't matter. Uh, that, that to me is, is truly having the right mindset and focusing on the things that matter to you in your life. And we all have uh, things that are most important. I think when we narrow that focus and, and eliminate some of the negativity around us that, that's by that either comparing your life to other people or thinking about things you don't have, it, it, for me, you know, to speak personally, it's, it's allowed me to really enjoy uh, life because uh, one of my famous lines, and I'm going to butcher it, but I would go, I would, uh, you know, ask people to go back and, and watch it is, is, you know, the last line delivered by Pam in the office. And I'll paraphrase, but what she's basically saying is there's a lot of beauty in the simple things. And I, I truly believe that. And often we miss that by these delusions of grandeur about how life should be and how it should be living in a, in a mansion with, you know the hottest woman on the planet and 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 millions and millions of dollars and that that stuff just doesn't it doesn't bring you bring you happiness true happiness is embracing the pain and suffering and failures and mistakes in life and and trying to do a little bit better next time hey the sun is brightest after the darkest dawn here here pal what type of scotch were you drinking last night I got a gift from a buddy of mine who was in town it was a Macallan 18 mm -hmm. so big thanks to uh to my buddy uh, for for dropping that off and uh Joe Rogan? I enjoyed the three, <laughs> three fingers. Is that Dr. Joe Rogan out there saying, hey, listen. Or Alex Jones? Oh, maybe. <laughs> it was an InfoWars 18-year age thing? That's awesome. Good for you. Thanks for the book. We appreciate your time. Congrats on the MVP. The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck by Mark Manson. Can't wait to read it. Can't wait to watch you this Sunday for a couple series. You're the best, dude. Thanks, guys. Have a good day, man. Hey, because you won the MVP, I think it's time. Ooh. I got my guitar back. Oh, to, hell yeah. Was it in go. quarantine? Did it get COVID? Is it vaccinated oh. or no? The guitar. <laughs> <laughs> The Garth. Laid it out on my roots. <laughs> I showed up in boots. And ruined your black tie hair. I was the last one, one to show. Last one to go, last one you thought you'd see there. Had a surprise, a tear in my eye. Now I'm in my ass of champagne. I'll be as high as I
chases my blues away. Guess what? And I'll be okay. What a show. Wow. Hell yeah. Woo. That's the show. All right, actually, we've got to wrap up this hour. Let's get to a break. Uh, I don't know what song's going to be playing right now, but it ain't us playing Garth with Aaron playing the guitar. Uh. We're back in four minutes. A lot to digest there. Can't thank you all enough for watching. Here at YouTube.com forward slash The Pat McAfee Show. See you in four. Today's event is me versus a Carolina Reaper pepper. A pepper that has what? 2.2 million scovels uh, on average. I think it's, it's pretty much the hottest pepper in the world. In comparison, a jalapeno is? 6,000 scovels. For every second after it is in my mouth, I don't grab this milk. Yeah. We'll give $25 to a random person in the comments section right now. $4,500 feels like a good amount to give away though. And that'd three be three minutes. This is gonna be a long three minutes. That's redder than devil's dick. <laughs> that crunch. How are we, we doing so far? It doesn't look too bad. I should have taken a drink of water beforehand though, because I think I had a dry mouth, I had a little cotton mouth. Oh. Oh, okay, once the hiccups start. <laughs> I, think I, I think you're just about done for. What's your biggest regret in life? <laughs> do, do you have two more minutes in you? Oh, I think it's just starting to hit like the peak. The curve on this thing is just starting to go up. <laughs> you are handling this much better than Bill did, though. You are, yeah. Billy Tubes was puking 10 seconds in. 130. 130. It's burning my esophagus. Do you feel like you're going to puke? Oh, God, that milk looks ice cold, too. No! Oh, Nick broke my heart. Ah, hey, one more, one more. <laughs> yep. Now we go. Now we go. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Dance with me. How you feel now? A little bit better, but not quick. Oh, my God. That's a bad idea. I need more. I need more milk. Joseph Montana, Italian American out of Western Pennsylvania. Yeah. Some it, was a, it was a it was a kidnapping attempt of his infant grandchild. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, in the house. They came into the house, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then he was sitting on top of the stairs. <laughs> yep. He was like, put the baby down. And they said no. And he said, ah. And they said, no, I'm taking your granddaughter. He said, ah. And they said, I'm taking it. And he goes, you asked for it. Sketchers up, <laughs> sketchers down. <laughs> Boom. Yeah. yeah. Dark. There's no way. Then he yeah. ran down the stairs, yep. and the baby yeah. caught the baby, <laughs> caught the granddaughter after the beak of the lady that was trying to snatch the baby mm -hmm. passed out. It was like one of those, boom, and they like dropped it. And Joe Montana, he actually slid down the stairs at yeah. first. You know, how, like that, how people would surf almost down the stairs. He did that and caught his granddaughter like this, and then he picked up the ball and he actually put foot on kidnapping uh, suspect, mm -hmm. called the police with his Bluetooth and waited there. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> That's fucking Joe Montana, dude. That's right. Just sing that all the way through the break, but it was. 
I didn't know if that one was still in the holster. I'm happy we found that one. Yeah. You know, because Friends in Low Places is like an OG song that everybody sings in public drunk. Yep. Haven't mm -hmm. heard it in a long time. You know, who knows what Garth's been up to. But as soon as we got through it, I thought to myself, yep, you got one of these. <laughs> yeah. You got one of these. That was uh, good times there with Aaron. I appreciate the fact that he did not read that book. Yeah. And he just said it last night, literally just to piss people yeah. off. That's awesome. Why not? Why not? I mean, yeah, this... I think that's very funny to him. Well, I think it's very funny to me, too. Yeah, I mean, exactly. it's the MVP in the NFL. I mean, that is a classic move. What do we think the big takeaway from this one's going to be from people? Um, he delves into a lot there. Doesn't give yeah. a fuck. Him and Devontae. Alan Lazard, Alan Lazard is a great dude. Yeah. Um, you kind of misled us back. how much he's yeah. coming play back on Sunday. Yeah, Tone Diggs placed a bet immediately on the Packers whenever he said he was going to play a sizable one. Made sizable. a lot of money a couple games ago. I forget which one. Oh, last night he made last a bunch of money too because there was a Ben Roethlisberger over-under pass attempts. We all knew that was going to be Kobe's last game. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so he made a lot of money off that last night. Diggs was trying to ride that momentum. Yeah. Oh, before FanDuel hears this because they're listening on Six. at the same exact time as us, before they change his line, Diggs got in there and then all of a sudden AJ – Couple series, probably, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. maybe in tones like, God, fucking damn it. <laughs> Let me cash out of this, I hope. Uh, I don't know what else anybody would talk about, but I think it was a great conversation. We can't thank him enough. And AJ, you're a good guy, dude. You know great you, guy. You're a good great guy. guy. You never hear it. You're sawed oh, off prick, he says, yeah. asshole, all he that is. stuff. You're a good guy, dude. Okay. Birthday this week. Yeah, were you going to tell us about this Capricorn celebration we had? Thursday. And I was going to post a video the morning of my birthday to try to let people know it's my birthday without telling them it's my birthday. <laughs> nice. Oh, like you just bought a new house. Hey, I didn't know no, we I shared don't. birthdays. Happy no, birthday. To do with the house. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, it's not my oh, happy birthday to you. Yeah. So you don't you don't want us to celebrate this Capricorn living another year, AJ? Yeah. Congrats, dude. Come on, oh, dude. Yeah, it's great. It's a great day. I'm glad to be alive, believe me. All right. This show's Very ending. Great. Chris Mad Dog Russo will be on the other side of this six minute break. We're back tomorrow with a nice Wednesday for you. We can't thank you enough for listening here. Cheers. Oh yeah. These are dead. Really? I thought you just got out of the thing. What the hell is going on? Oh, your batteries are dead? AJ, enough. You hear me? <laughs> Don't need it. Not today, dude. What about the rechargeables? Some... Roethlisberger played his last game at Heinz last night. Okay, not today. Not today. No. You're right. You're too soon. Potentially. The Sun Award are not giving a fuck, by the way. Great book. Mm -hmm. You see that one? I haven't read it, but it's everywhere. Like, it's, it's on shelves yeah, and you walk by. A lot really? of, is it like the I uh, Hope They Serve Beer and Hell thing? Classic. Well, Talker right. Max. <laughs> not as not the same style book, but just lies. <laughs> well, Tucker Max. I haven't heard that name in a while. Oh, 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 yeah. He mm -hmm. did all that stuff, of course. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Tucker Max. Everyone knows that guy. It's because another guy. That's before you. It's a generation before you. It's a okay. guy who wrote a book about partying and doing all this stuff. Yeah, a couple not, of them. Not, not, not possible. I mean, it may be. If he did, he's unbelievable. And we're about to see the machine movie. True. You know, with what Perk Kreischer did over there in Russia. Hey, when's that come out? I don't know. I'm excited for it, though. I think they put a lot of work into it, just like the mm -hmm. Kurt Warner one. Like the Kurt Warner one, they put a lot of work into that. I think it's a good movie, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. American Underdog is gone. Reviews. Unbelievable reviews. That's what I'm talking about, they put, right? of, they put a lot of work into every movie that goes out. Well, no, it's very obvious. Some of them, they do not. Not <laughs> you. Do not get your baby belt. What are you doing? So that's it? You got one of these? What is that? Like, what is that? Am I missing something here? Is this baby belt something that is going on? I don't know about Whoa. No, I just think it's hysterical that, you know, that's out of nowhere, yeah. I just fucking out of my back pocket. I'm, like, oh, I'm fucking, you know what I mean? Like, that's a funny thing. That's what <laughs> it is. Yeah, I enjoy it. I think I'm always going to have it in my back pocket. I think it's just going to be right there. I shouldn't have told everybody because they'll pickpocket me, but I think I got to leave it out because I'm an actual fucking champ. Anyways, yep. just ain't give it time. How you doing? You got any, hey, you got any tables available? You know what I mean? <laughs> You rolling the Applebee's with one of those suckers on your shoulder. Oh. Table for six, please. Uh, we don't have anything for another 45 minutes. Is that right? <laughs> right this way, sir. What about now? How about the bar? I <laughs> open that place up. <laughs> Golly. Man. How about the best 10 minutes of my life after a two-hour cocktail party and 18 <laughs> holes? Yes. Cementing my best friendship with Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, pretty sweet. You know, people talk about having performances where there's some TV executives in the back and they decide to create a, a sitcom around your set or give you a show or whatever. I had no idea that when I was up there, the, Gumpy just sent in the photo. It's me, Aaron Rodgers, Chris Paul, ESPN caddy, Ray Allen, uh -huh. all standing in the front of the area talking in front of everybody. And you see me pointing something. I mean, who knows? what was coming out at that exact moment. But Ray Allen had a good laugh. Ray Allen had a good laugh. Look at that. Good pop out of oh, Ray. Yeah, yeah, great pop by everybody up there. 
Yeah, I mean, fucking home runs, dude. That one would lead to Aaron Rodgers Tuesday. Which yeah. would, and awesome. two MVPs for Aaron. Two MVPs. I mean, we won the golf tourney. I mean, honestly. Did you win the golf tourney? Yes. Yeah. Yes. I thought he tried. I thought he said your golf game may have struggled on that trip. I mean, I wasn't the best golfer on our team. But you got one of these, dude? You fucking ever got one of these, bro? Huh? huh? Let's cheers him. Oh, you ain't got one. You ain't got one? I don't. Nope. Oh, I'm sorry. This one with the dust and everything. I look at this every night. I polish it up. We beat the fuck out of the NBA. You were second on your team, though, behind Thielen, right? Adam Thielen is a very good golfer. That's where I yes. met him as well. Scobie is also a good Scobie's golfer. Scobie's unbelievable. <laughs> Ray Allen was pretty good, but we really got him off his game when Ty showed up to the first tee and wrecked <laughs> his golf cart in the rain. <laughs> Not just that. Also, it was hard to play at my pace. You know, Ray Allen's used to playing really fast. All these retired guys, they play like 27 holes a day at like yeah, this yeah. rapid pace. Yeah. When you're playing with me, I got some beers to drink and mm -hmm. I got some balls to find in the woods, but I'm going to find them and I'm going to play them. That's right. I'm a gritty golfer, okay? I'm going to go see the entire course. I'm going to never find them. I'm going to see the whole course, but I'm not searching for a ball more than seven seconds. I know I've played with Ray. He can play. He's got a super smooth swing, too. Hey, by the way, I'm not doing it in real life. I This is the area. Ball's here. I'm not taking a penalty stroke either because I could fucking find it, all right? No, you can take a, just take a stroke and play lateral. We so had a strategy. Three from here. We had eyes on it, but also mm -hmm. Ray Allen looked very pissed off and impatient mm -hmm. at us. It was like, oh, oh, here's a little. It does appear as if we can bring something to this game. <laughs> yeah. I had a remember that flop shot first hole? Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Ray Allen probably thought I was the fucking best golfer out there. <laughs> I put one in the woods. All right. I go find it. I hit it out through the thing. Slice over the green. I'm on the other side of the green on the other side of this hill. You're on a practice green, actually. Yeah, on a practice green on top, the other side. But by the way, par four, this is three. Yeah. Yeah. Somehow. Yes. Hey, I need this here. Already been in the woods. Okay, so Ray Allen already has seen my first. We showed up late. We squealed coming up. Yeah, <laughs> had to. This was after a delay, like a two-hour delay. We had a lot of beverages. And then all of a sudden, some, we didn't get the memo that the tournament was starting back up. And we were kind of told, hey, we're starting right now. And every, Scobie. Ray, I forget who he was playing. Tyler Johnson. Tyler Johnson. They were like warming up and already on the tee box as we were pulling up. We got lost on the course. It was like hole 14 or something way out there. So we showed up. Ty's obliterated at this oh, point. Oh, yeah. Ty is absolutely good. Squeals the golf cart coming in. Turn that zone bitch sideways, basically. They're all up on the tee box, and they just slowly turn and just look down. How and many of you showed up? Well, there's five of us, six of us. I forget. Was everybody like else that. by themselves or just with a caddy? Uh, some people had crews. Some people okay. had crews with them. But it was very much a small little gathering out there at Baja Mar. But as soon as we set the tone. Yeah, as soon as make you, a statement. Yeah. Fucking Vin Diesel pulling up. <laughs> 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 we set the tone. And then I hit this flop shot. Boom. They were in with a par. I think they were in with a par. Yeah. So I hit this flop shot up over a hill, up over a tree. I mean, it landed on the green. It was. It made me look like a golfer. I mean, it legitimately looked like a golfer. And then I missed the putt by, I don't know, 45 feet or something. <laughs> so yeah. they, they won the first hole. Me and Scobie yeah. had to get back aligned on what we were going to do going forward. And it was at that point I realized, like, we just take our time a little bit. Ray is not – Ray ain't gonna, Ray's going to be fed up with us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he was. Ray was <laughs> very Swinging angry. Up. But he's a hell of a golfer. All those guys are good golfers out there. You know, they golf. Yeah, like Ray's the guy – yeah, Ray will play 36 in a day easy. We're uh, Darren Williams, the yeah. boxer, oh, yeah. basketball player. We talked to him. He legitimately plays like 26 holes a day or something, yeah, like 27 damn. holes a day. They're like professional golfers. Like those guys, how they approach the game, you, you'll see if you come to Tahoe this year, a lot of those dudes are deadly serious. Wow. I mean, it was a golf trip for everyone else pretty much, and we were there just getting boosted up. Yeah. Right, you know? But like those guys were like dialed that. in. Like We're having a good time. I, hey, a couple it's, good shots. That's how it should be. What do you mean? You can do. No one ever said you can't have a good time and win the whole thing. By the way, Damn right. that's when you're going to owe me $20 million. That's how I'm going to do it. <laughs> Boom. Yeah. Boom. You will not be having a good time with all that pressure on you when you actually don't even Monday qualify. Top 50, right, bro? What My pressure. Top 50? There's no pressure top 50 because guess what I got next week? That's yeah. right. I got next week to get you? top. Oh, you got exemptions into everything now? I, I would assume we're getting to the point where I could potentially probably call a favor or two to get into some of those if I feel like I could play well. Oh, yeah. I, I would love to see you get into one of those. Well, I'm not, not until I... I'd like to see you get into, like, a city qualifier event, even. Okay, well, when the time comes, you know, I, right now we're busy working. Yeah. Whenever I get a chance to golf once, more than once a year, mm -hmm. maybe once every two years, we'll work towards it. But all I need to know is your $20 million is going to look a lot like this right here, pal. Yeah. Right around my waist. All right? Okay. Golf championship right here. Beat the NBA. 
Yeah, it, there's a college D1 golfer that we beat. That's right. Uh-huh. There's a D1 golfer that we beat in that particular tourney. You know what I mean? Hey, J.R. Smith. <laughs> Got one of these? <laughs> he was awesome. Oh, yeah. He was so cool. J.R. Smith was so cool. They were all very cool. Everybody was very cool. Very cool. Set the tone, though, very... First 10 minutes with the microphone, though. Oh, it yeah. appears I've got a best friend. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's get out of here. We're back, Mignogna. There'll be a lot of shit to talk about, I assume. People are going to be pissed about something. We'll mm-hmm. talk about it. We're trying to enjoy. Big time. We're trying to enjoy this thing and keep this thing going. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Maybe Garth Brooks stops by. <laughs> oh, Maybe what? Chris Gaines. Maybe we get a real performance. We'll see. AJ, thank you so much for your incredible performance today and your friendship and your birthday coming up, dude. Happy birthday. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday, AJ. 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 Thank you. Yeah, appreciate it. And thank you for your your title that you keep throwing over your shoulder. What's Capricorn? What's that mean? You get pissed off. You're quiet. You're yeah, stoic. I have no idea. Yeah. I've never. I don't. All I don't know those. anything about that. Stoic. No, I said Gabagool. Oh, that's Capricorn. Gabagool, yeah. How's the Gabagool with the Capricorns? Great question. Never thought about it. Well, yeah. what are you? I'm a bull, dude. Taurus. Taurus. No big deal. Me and the Rock, same birthday. If I remember oh, yeah. from a girl's and binder. And same symbol. If I remember from a girl's today. binder at school, they're like a little sassy, a little flirty. Capricorns? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, Capricorn for today is uh, you enjoy your work, and that reflects on your results. You are great at managerial functions. I didn't know these were motivational <laughs> speeches every day. Yeah. Is that what happens in this world? I need to get in the game. What is the bull being said? It's all bull. What's the bull saying? No, no, I'm Taurus. Yeah, bull. Yeah, what's the oh, Taurus saying? But all bull, not no bull. No, no, no bull is the shoes that Mac Jones wears. That is no bull. All bull is what I am. I'm a Taurus. I'm a fucking bull. Mm-hmm. Alongside The Rock, David Beckham, and others. <laughs> I'm sure. What is same exact birthday? When is your birthday? May 2nd, dude. I think the queen as well, all right? Have a little fucking respect. Jeez. Yeah, I think it's a pretty big day, that May 2nd, dude. Yeah. Zeta, what did the bull say? Uh, you have, on the professional front, the day predicts uncertain time. Oh. You may be unable to achieve your oh. target. Ah. Shut, Shut, that is Shut, up. Shut up. Shut up. Shut that page. That? <laughs> Fuck that. That's unbelievable. I don't want to hear that. Who signs up for that? The horse horses. Psychos. <laughs> What's the website there? Uh, daily. S- some daily horoscope. Thing. Horoscope. Oh my God! Don't don't listen. That's a part of the problem. Listen, Aaron <laughs> was just talking about it. All right, and although he is a big fan of the Capricorn talk, I don't think we need that to to bog anybody down. There's a. You think the Rock read that and was like, "Oh no." No. Yeah. No, I don't want to work out today. The Rock doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't look into that stuff. He creates his own. Yeah. I don't know about David Beckham though. He might be reading that thing. No. We're all on another website. It's another negative one. They Uh-oh. they just hate stop. the horses. Don't read it. Don't no, read it. Stop, 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 stop. Don't read it. Stop. Read it, Zeke. No, no. Don't. can't do it. Let's get out of here. All right, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Fucking hey, hopefully the Taurus will live to me, a little better life tomorrow. Oh, isn't that clever? You would love to hear the Taurus getting shit on yeah. by some website. You're huh? the one that started to take pride in it until you started to hear about what they're saying about you. Well, I just want to let everybody know that ain't that ain't what the Taurus is about. All right, we're actually pretty positive. Hey, it ain't all lollipops and rainbows. It is. Sometimes the stars don't align for you. Well, you don't know the subtle art of not giving a fuck. Were you part of the switch, though? Because they added one, didn't they? Yeah, they they changed the date. Well, is it Chinese New Year? Yeah, Year of the Dragon. No, Well, it's a rabbit. Year of the Rabbit. What's the range? What's the range in dates that gives you... Whatever's positive is what I'm for. Yeah. Okay? (laughs) 28 days or something. Yeah, I think I'm a Capricorn, actually. What what did we say? What did... uh, Anyways, get out of here. (laughs) See you tomorrow. Can't wait for the daily horoscope reading. We'll do that. Yes. See how good it is for the soul? I need to look this stuff up. I don't think so. I bet you t- your tomorrow sucks. They can't have my tomorrow suck. They're going to drive me oh, into yeah. the ground. It's probably going to go positive now. So it's, it's negative today, positive tomorrow. Well, and that brings me back Maybe. to my Might point. Be having a bad week. The sun is brightest after its darkest yeah, dawn. Yeah, that's right. Amen. And in the horoscope thing, I don't know if it's a day or a week, to your point, Nick. It's dark right it's, now in our horoscope. Day. That's right. It's that day. means the sun's going to be brighter tomorrow. That's right. Well said. <laughs> All right, we're back. See you. See you tomorrow, dude. Thank you all so much. Be a friend. Tell a friend. Bye.